doing it. Sexy BJ Ray, huh? Yep, sexy BJ Ray, aka Braden Ray. So where does a BJ yeah. come from? So is that something BJ, you just acquire a lot, or is like? Well, the ladies gave me the nickname. Oh, okay. Nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, so the <laughs> BJ originally came from my first name is Braden. Okay. And my middle name is Jesse. Oh, okay. Um, so Braden Jesse. So Braden Jesse Ray. BJ. Type you know? stuff. And so hey. when I was in middle school, you know the Snapchat name, sexy BJ Ray. And right. Ever since then, dude, Every, it, it just became it what it is. It just it's stuck. Just, it hasn't changed. Just stuck. And I can't change it now because I'm notorious for it. Right. You know? And once you're notorious for something, it's like. You got to keep the pace rolling, you know? You got to keep it going. Yeah. But yeah, man, you're our second MMA fighter that we've had on here. Really? Yeah. Who was first? Tony Cortez. Really? Yeah. Oh, you had Tony on the show? Yeah. Oh, yeah Tony's my Tony. boy. Tony's hella cool. Yeah, Tony Cortez. No he, way. he was supposed to come back on it, but it didn't happen. Should Sorry. be happening soon someday. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to have to get one. the whole gang together, dude, and get on here. Oh, Folks. all four of us? Tony, and yeah. I actually saw Tony not too long ago at uh, Dos Lagos. Oh, at Dos Lagos? What's yeah. Up? He was seeing a movie. I ran into him. Were we you guys? Do- did you guys do like a little face off? Were you guys just like close Nah, bro. Nah, <laughs> you know what? I don't want that smoke. From Tony. You know what featherweight he fights at? Oh, what featherweight, featherweight he fights? At? What weight he fights? <laughs> what weight it's he featherweight, fight. right? Uh, I don't know actually. I don't, I don't know, know. exactly. Yeah, I think I he fights saying. at um, I think he fights at whatever weight class one forty five is. What is that? That's, That's feather. featherweight. Yeah, featherweight. Feather. I think one forty fives. 145. Yeah, uh-huh. But he's doing good, bro. I've been seeing yeah, like he's six been, and oh. Yeah, six and oh, doing good. Um, he was always a tough kid in high school, you know, wrestling. Right. He wrestled in Centennial and he was always a tough guy at the duels, you know, giving our guys tough matches. So um I think he was a grade below me. Was he the same grade as you guys? Because I was twenty I graduated twenty eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. So he was all right. Okay. So he was twenty nineteen. Okay. Our year. Got you. Yeah, but yeah, he's a tough kid and he's doing good. I think he's training over somewhere in Riverside, right? Uh, no. Moval. Moval. Icon. Icon MMA. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Gotcha. I like how you remember that. That was cool. Oh, yeah. You brought it up fine. like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it would have taken me a while to like go back to my mind and like try to find the name of it. But mm-hmm. you brought it up like nothing. Yeah. Appreciate that. Got to... When, when, the, when the ball is rolling, like my memory's there. But you know, <laughs> let's just have that ball keep it rolling. <laughs> sure. But uh, no, nah, yeah. I actually... Well, I told him. I was like, hey, when are you going to fight? next and he said he was a little banged up and he was like yeah i gotta take a couple months real quick to recover and he said i'll be back in the cage so i was like dude just let me know when because i'll be home till uh like september so i was like if you're gonna fight let me know so you said you go to duke right yeah yeah for wrestling yeah so i wrestle at duke university in north carolina how long Um, have you been wrestling for i've been wrestling since i was uh like Tail end of six years old. So really six when years I, old. Yeah, yeah. So really like when I was seven. The game's really instilled in you then. Yeah, the game's instilled The in game me. is instilled. Where, where was your first place that you trained at? Okay, so here's what happened. Here's the, here's the background story. All right, the whole breakdown. Here's the breakdown. So my dad, he wrestled in high school. Right. And uh-huh. he was a pretty good wrestler in high school. Uh, Lakewood High School. In Lakewood, Lakewood High School. Yeah, okay. in Lakewood, California. And uh, so fast forward. I'm the baby of four boys. There's three above me, right? Mm, so we're all two three. years apart. Are three they other. Are wrestlers too? Yes. Dude, three wrestlers. other gladiators, dude. You should see them. Just freaking three no necks. <laughs> 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 no necks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rightful as hell. So uh, three older brothers. We're all a couple years apart. Um, uh-huh. But anyway, so we're, you know, a bunch of rowdy, young, rambunctious boys. And my dad told my mom, he was like, hey, you know, I got, it was too hard for him to bounce around too many different sports you know he had one kid playing basketball one kid playing football one doing karate and all that stuff he's uh-huh. like you know what but no, none of them were like really set on that it was just kind of like you know when so you're a kid yeah. yeah you yeah. just you just rolling with the punches one of your whatever comes up right you're like oh yeah i'll try this so he tells my mom he's like hey i got a good idea let me put on with the boys in wrestling they'll get their energy out get their aggressiveness out mm-hmm. and uh it'll be really good for them plus they'll learn how to defend themselves Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah, so absolutely. that's what he did so we started at um so he didn't even do it like oh i'm a wrestler they gotta be wrestlers he said it like nah they yeah they yeah. need this yeah exactly yeah 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 so it wasn't like that it wasn't like one of those at first like those hard old parents like oh yeah he's gonna yeah, my yeah. son's gonna grow up to be a wrestler blah 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 blah. he was just like oh let, let, let me put the boys in this and see how they like it mm-hmm. so he put all of us in wrestling and the first place i started was uh this place off of green river called empire training center off so, of Green River. Yeah, yeah. So right over by um like With Joe Herrera? Yeah, yeah. Well Paul Herrera, yeah. Paul, Paul Herrera, Herrera and yeah. Joe Herrera. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They yep. used to have it over here. Yeah. And the farmer's boy. Yeah, yep. Yep. Over there by what, Home Gardens. 
right? yeah. area. Going yeah. into Home so, Gardens. So the original, the first spot was over off Green River. And that's when I was a little kid, when I was like six, seven, mm-hmm. eight. And I think I think a few years in, that's when they moved it over by the Farmer Boys. Mm-hmm. But um, when I first started out there, man, I mean, so Paul, Paul was a UFC fighter. So he You're was against Gary Goodridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That notorious <laughs> clip, man. The notorious Ooh. clip. Joe Herrera yeah. used to be my dad's coach for really? wrestling in high school. Wow, that's that's crazy. And at that time, Paul Herrera was the coach for Santiago. Yeah. Like 1996, eight. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so Paul was my first wrestling coach. And so uh-huh. I started at Empire, which is pretty cool because, you know, it was a big MMA gym. Guys like Kimbo Slice would come in there training. Oh, uh, Tito Ortiz. Uh, Tank Abbott. So I think the wire on the microphone might be a little like fucked or something. Just try not to touch it as much. Okay, my bad. Is it working? Am I good now? Yeah, you're good. I think his arm was touching it. Yes, that's weird that it's doing it though, because mine it shouldn't be doing that. Okay. The well, what you're saying, Kimbo, no, yeah, Tito, yeah, yeah. Tank so when, Abbott. Yeah, so when I was a kid, you know, I'd be training out there off to the side and in the uh on the wrestling mats, and these mm-hmm. guys like Tank, you know. Uh, Tito Ortiz. Yeah, Tito Ortiz. And then we'll be coming in the gym from time to time training. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so for me, I jumped right into the fight game when I was a little kid because I was just surrounded by it. You know? Yeah, and, right. you grew up and, with it. And wrestling being one of the best bases you could have for combat sports. Right. Um, it was just like, I'd see those guys and I'd be like, okay, I want to be like those guys. You know, I want to I wanna eventually fight. So kind of since ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to fight. Cause I'd watch what those guys do. And I grew up watching all the UFC fights. And, and of course, mm-hmm. like I said, Paul being my first coach, he was a f- fighter. And, and so, yeah, it was just really cool, you know, to be in that mix. Cause the combat sports world and the wrestling world, all of that is really, really tight. Intricate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really yeah. small. So, um, but yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool. So I started out there and I wrestled, I think maybe one or no more than one, like two, maybe three years at empire mm-hmm. and as a then, kid yeah as a kid um my brothers ended up a couple of them were like oh this isn't for me so they quit um they even they eventually came back to it which i'll get to but at the time they quit so then me how and, much older are your brothers from you so we're all two years apart i'm mm-hmm. about to turn 23 i'm 22 now I'm about to turn 23 so 23 uh 25 27 and 29 yeah mm-hmm. you're about to go into your jordan year dude that's what I'm saying, dude. dude congrats <laughs> on making it that far. You okay. know what we do. Praise but, God. Uh, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but um, but no, yeah. So we're all we're all about two years apart. And um, so my two oldest brothers, they were done with it. And me and my other brother, we wanted to go somewhere else. Um, because like Empire was kind of like it was like a decent wrestling club at the time, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like one of those wrestling clubs that would like take you to all the tournaments and stuff like mm-hmm. that as like yeah. a team kind of thing. It's just like a, tra- it's a training center. Yeah, it's yeah, like a training, training center. center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right I ended up, money. yeah, I ended up transferring over to uh, the Husky Club, Centennial Husky Club when I was a kid. Husky and, Club, what's that? Yeah, so basically Centennial High School, uh, they're the Huskies and they had a kids club called the Centennial Husky Club. And so uh-huh. it was like, uh, you know, uh, K through eighth grade through junior But was high. it like, wrestling yeah wrestling yeah, yeah oh yeah, what the yeah, fuck yeah. i didn't yeah. know that yeah, yeah dude it was really good really tough wrestling do they club. still you didn't offer that still huh um Husky club? i don't know especially don't randy know out of there randy left yeah randy laughed true do you remember you remember a kid named micah duran yeah. Yeah, yeah he was in that shit he was in the husky say club, swear i swear and his older brother kainoa yeah. i didn't even know he had an older brother yeah, yeah, it's crazy kainoa, but micah was in the husky club with me yeah i've know. never heard of the husky club until right now yeah dude it was dude bro it was a savage club. Hey, Micah, if, yeah. hey, Micah, if you still got it, I'll suplex you. I'm telling you right now. I'm hey, looking you. All hey. the smoke. We, yeah, we had some savages in that club, oh, bro. Yeah. I mean, like, we would get in there. And you know Randy. Yeah. Randy's like Randy's old school, a like military sergeant. head. He's a sergeant, dude. You know, just like as old school as it gets when it comes to training. And so he trained you like that as a kid. You know, you'd be doing crazy conditioning. Fucking crazy. one-armed handstand push-ups. Oh, dude, nuts, bro. We'd be doing cartwheels handstands down the old mat cone drills you know remember how they used to set up the four cones on yeah the and then you had to whatever? like run that yeah, yeah and you'd have to do the circuit like once you get one past one cone you do uh-huh. one. yeah so i was getting after it since i was a little kid with all these other you know little savages um and that was cool you know while it lasted but same thing kind of happened with that club you know it wasn't as much it wasn't as like seriously devoted to oh you know we're trying to like 
really form like a team club culture and like go to all these big tournaments with each other together yeah and it was more like a, oh monday wednesday night <clears throat> you know wrestling, yeah, wrestling club. yeah exactly Fridays to sparring exactly and gotcha. it was like yeah open mats on the weekend you know come spar if you want but there's mm -hmm. never like really any guidance oh you know, okay like okay. when it came to like oh you need to go to this tournament this tournament you know this is it what was you do. cool because when i used to do jujitsu here at gracie they used to same like they would still teach you, but they would also take you to the tournaments. I competed in my first tournament with them. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, even when we went to go train, remember like that free uh, yeah. training session that we got? Yeah. It was like at the end, he just said, remember, there is a tournament. This and that. If you guys are wanting to do this, sign up right here. This and that. So he like lets us know at least. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always good. That's not like that's what I try to tell people too. like. When like I have like parents like approach me and they're like, hey, do you know any good like wrestling kids clubs and stuff like that? I'm like, well, I've been away in North Carolina for a little bit now, but I try to tell them like, hey, like make sure wherever you go, you find like a coaching staff and like that's like involved, wants to take these kids to tournaments, stuff like that. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself, which is mm -hmm. hard because you don't really know anything. Dude, so management like, is hard as shit, dude. Yeah, management is hard. It's a whole. Yeah. How do you <clears throat> um how do you fight when you're over there in North Carolina? Like, where do you fight at? Okay, like so to actually like compete in a national MMA fight. Okay, yeah, so. Event well, shit. Yeah, so right now, so when I go away to North Carolina, I'm just strictly wrestling. You know, okay. I, I wrestle over there, um, D1, like I said, Duke University. Uh, shout out Coach Lanham, you already know. But uh, <laughs> but no, so when I'm over there, I'm focused on wrestling, and then when I come back in the summers here, I'm working on my striking, working on my jiu-jitsu, um, Working over at Peerless Jiu Jitsu in Corona, California, one of the best Jiu Jitsu uh, studios around. Professor Steven Martinez, freaking phenomenal. That you guy's know, a stud, stud, dude. I've seen yeah. him. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, he's like a Pan Am world champ, crazy accolades. Like, this dude's nuts. This is <laughs> nuts. And how I met Steven was actually <clears throat> when all this COVID stuff happened. Uh huh. I uh, came back from school and there was nowhere to wrestle. And so my dad noticed this jujitsu place, Peerless Jujitsu. And so he, uh, I wasn't even with him at the uh -huh. time. He uh, went in and introduced himself to the owner, Steven. Yeah. And he was like, hey, you know, I have my son. He's a D1 wrestler. He's back in town because of COVID. He was like, we need a place to train. And um, he was like, is it cool if we start training here? And Steven was super cool about it. He was like, yeah, no problem. So I started training there you know, working with the jiu-jitsu guys a little bit on their takedowns. They was working with me on my submissions. And that's pretty much, I think that was 2020. Yeah, 2020, right? When the cold, cold, yeah, that whole down. crap, yeah. Yeah, what yeah. What belt are you in jiu-jitsu? Huh? What belt are you? So I do nogi. I okay. do nogi. Um, and, I, and I haven't, like, you know, been, like, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works where it's, like, with the with the nogi and stuff like that but like if yeah, i, I don't know but if nogi. i were to enter a competition like my professor tells me he's like yeah you i wouldn't let you enter anything less than you know blue belt he's like you could even enter like more advanced if you want to yeah. just because like wrestling is like the most dominant you you once you, once you have like, your, like purple your, or brown belt i would i would definitely like probably say if i were to enter a jiu-jitsu competition i'd probably enter like purple belt purple belt yeah it's does purple come before brown or is, is yeah, it's the before other way? Yeah. Purple, brown, black, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then like way later on, it's red. Yeah. It's, it takes forever to get that. Yeah. But the reality is for me, it's like, I don't know how I feel about belts. Like, you know, like. There's some white like, belts fucking us up <laughs> Exactly, man. dude. It's like, it's like Bruce Lee said. He's like, a belt doesn't mean shit, you know? Right. Like, uh, because you could come in like me, a wrestler, and I freaking was beating up on black belts. Mm -hmm. You know, submitting black belts. But I'm just, because my wrestling's so dominant. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, it's cool and all to like recognize your like submissions level and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, personally, I feel like I'd, I could hang with any belt. I feel like I could enter a black belt competition and do good. Really? I would just have you to should. be strategic. I would just have to be strategic. I would just take the guys down. I mean, I don't know exactly how the point system work. I know they take, uh, take takedowns into uh, more consideration now. And I would definitely take down any of the black belts like instantly. But with with the black belt knowledge <clears throat> and just how aggressive wrestling is, you don't think you like what's your what's like what what's telling that you might get caught into something? Um, so it's kind of weird, dude. I know it sounds like weird to say, but I've always had like a really good discernment and like self awareness when okay. I do jujitsu. So instantly when I went in, like I would go with like these black belt guys, and I could literally sit in their guard, and like I never get submitted. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I'm just nasty like that. Right. You know, so. Then you're big. You yeah, know? You I'm big. I'm strong. For sure. And I'm just very self-aware. Like I said, I've been around it since I was a kid. I watched fighting my whole life, studied it. 
And yeah. so I'm very self-aware of the um, weaknesses of the human body and, and the vulnerability in certain Leverage. Positions. Yeah, right. exactly. I'm very, I'm very uh, self-aware of my vulnerability okay. when I'm grappling. So I never, you know, if I, when I'm doing jujitsu, it's kind of funny. Like, you know, I'll just take the guys down. I'll sit in their garden. I'll just be stubborn, you know, and mm -hmm. no one really gets anywhere. I'm not submitting them and the, the higher level guys are not submitting there. me, but we're just, you know, but I always laugh and I'm saying, I'm like, yeah, you're lucky. No elbows are being thrown right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, if it was MMA, dude, I, dude, I hate yeah. this whole argument when people are always like, oh, which one's better jujitsu or wrestling? And they'll try to argue in like grappling senses. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. If a wrestler, if you're just grappling strictly, right? Well, first of all, the wrestler will always take down the jujitsu guy. Yeah. But then like from there on, yeah, the, the wrestler might the not be able guy. to do anything yeah. with grappling. But I'm like, that's not what I'm training finish. for, bro. I'm training for, I freaking find you in the street. I'm a blast double your ass. And freaking start smashing you with some elbows, you know? So, Head into the cave and you know, just doosh, one, doosh. Out, After the first elbow, that black belt's going to turn into a brown belt. After the second elbow, that brown belt's going to turn into a purple belt. After the third elbow, that purple and belt's so going to turn into a blue belt. So on and so on, like you said. So, um, so yeah, that's complete hogwash. For all you jiu-jitsu, you know, uh, lame boys out there, you know where to find me, bro. You know where to find me. Come get some wherever you want. So, hey. When was the last yeah. time you competed in a jiu-jitsu tournament? Um, last time I competed in a jiu-jitsu tournament was when, a, long, a while ago, long, long time ago. You should ago compete in one soon, bro, while you're here in California. Dude, I want I'd to. go to it. Yeah, I want to. I heard there's one coming up in Fullerton in a couple months. Oh, is so, there? Yeah. Yeah, you should yeah. do it. No, I, I would definitely be down, and uh, I definitely would, like, love to do that. I'd probably, like I said, I'd probably have to enter. I don't even know, like, what the classifications are, um, but I feel like I could hang with anybody. Like, I feel like if they're, like, don't get, if my goal is, listen, if my goal is to not get submitted, to I can go in the most advanced one and I can literally just take the guy down and I will not get submitted. I guarantee you. Like I just, bro, I'm too self-aware when yeah. it comes to it. And you know, that's why I'm going to dominate the MMA scene. Dude. You know, when I, when I get in the game, you know, one more year of college D1 wrestling. And then after that, freaking, what's his name? Yuri. Yuri sucks, bro. <laughs> Yuri, uh, dude, dude, he's trash. I don't even know his last name. Yeah, I don't no, know how wait, to pronounce his last name, bro. Going back to that fight against No Robert. one even cares. Yeah. What you? Glover, what were you saying? Glover beat him. Yeah, yeah. He just yeah. He got unlucky at the end. He got sloppy with it. Well, like, here's he what was happened. Beating him the entire fight. Here's what happened. Yuri sucks. Glover, whatever. Texaria. He's a 43, 44 year old man. I would run circles around him. He got hurt. He, he couldn't hang. Right. He couldn't hang, bro. Like, and that's the thing with Yuri is like Glover's a way better fighter, right? But Yuri's youth came in handy. Glove with age comes yeah, fatigue. That stamina. With, yeah. yeah, exactly. With age comes fatigue, and he couldn't hang with with the young buck. Like, you're, how do you like, think you're going to be at 43? Oh, I think I'm still going to be a monster. <laughs> but that's because that's because I, I mean, obviously, you know, you 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 got to be real with yourself, right? I'm like, when I'm at 43, I'm not going to be the same person I was when I was 30 years old. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm not going to be fighting at 43 years old. How long do you think you'll be fighting for? Like, to what what age do you think? Or like, not even age, maybe like in your career. Um, well, it's going to be like the stopping point. I think I'll probably like my like hype train, like my span of like my fight career. I want it to be around like five years. Five years. I want to be able to, you know, start when I get back, take a few amateur fights. Mm -hmm. Then once I um, take my amateur fights and I'm ready to go pro. See, the beauty of being an upper weight, right? So I'm going to fight at light heavyweights. And the beauty of being an upper weight is there's not as much pull, right? There's not as much... Um, you know, players in the pond. Right. So it's easier to climb the rankings faster. For example, mm -hmm. you Yuri. Look, yeah. Fucking. You look at a guy like Surreal Gone, it was like maybe like his third fight in the, or like, or like Yuri, like you're yeah. saying, like Yuri, it's like his like third, third fight, fight. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, all these other guys, even, even like at 180, uh, at 185s, you know, like what's his name? Pereira that just freaking uh -huh. knocked out Sean Strickland. Yeah. I mean, it was only, I think, his second or third fight in UFC. So it's really the UFC's desperate for guys that are big and can back it up that are hungry are, are hungry yeah and they're, they're looking for those guys all day every day so i like once i decide to get once i jump into it and i start taking fights it's gonna happen real fast it's gonna people aren't people are gonna be surprised by how fast they'll they'll see me at the top yeah. light heavyweight but, right light heavyweight. yeah that's light heavyweight 205 but, but, but i'll make sure listen before i dive in at the end to anything and stuff like that and, and start that span of that five year span, I'm gonna make sure I'm 100% fully prepared, you know, to yeah. re ready to rock and roll. It's gonna be like before I start my first professional fight, it's like, okay, I already know, 
you know, I could win the I could win the belt right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's the mindset you gotta have. That's that youth fire. That's that fire. That's that youth fire. Yeah, but that'd be fire. crazy. But, Your first fight in the UFC and you win the championship belt. I don't know. Has that ever been done? I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. Bro, like, sign someone to the UFC hey. for like the championship fight. Unless this is WWE, that's not going to happen in UFC, yeah. bro. Like, because yeah. they got to build. They got to build. Yeah, right. they definitely got to build. They got to build themselves up. You got to get your your what the loyalty from the fans, like the respect from the fans. You got to get the respect from the business, like <laughs> on your USA D on your what the fuck USA. on your <laughs> UFC debut, yeah. you win the championship belt. Now that's some that's crazy dumb. shit. Like that's so crazy like, shit. Not even Conor McGregor <laughs> will top that, and he's notorious for just yeah, yeah. That'd be tough, bro. Just like just <laughs> pull up to the scene first year out of college. Hey, sign me the belt. Sign me the contract. Take take the belt, bro. What kind I mean, of fighter in the it. UFC do you think you would compare yourself to? Um, I don't know. It's hard, man, because I you know I've had so many inspirations since I was a kid, and guys I like to like mirror my fighting style after. Name some. And like George St. Pierre, right? Okay. I, I really, I really like GSP sure. when I was a kid. He's my hero, right? He was like one of the greats. But I mean, there's a lot of guys recently that I really like how they fight. Um, Volkanovski. That I, I, I love how Volkanovski fights. And I would love to be able to, hey, Volkanovski, if, if you see this, bro, I want to come out. D1 wrestler. Help I'll be your out. freaking, uh, you'll be my sensei, dude. I'll be your, what do you call it? Disciple, whatever it is. Pupil. I don't know. All pupil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, but no, like, the way he fights, especially because at 205, I'm six foot. So I'll probably be like a little bit shorter because most of the guys at 205s are either like, you know, six the six one to six three range. Yeah. So, um, so I'll probably have to fight a lot like that style, you know, but he's really good. That's why it's so intriguing watching him is mm -hmm. because he's really extremely good at gauging that distance, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah, he knows he, he exactly knows distance where to be. for having like the shorter wingspan and being like the shorter fighter. His distance control is insane. That's how he, we beat Max Hall over the entire time. Oh, it was dude, just controlling the distance. He beat Max like a drum. Like nothing, dude. Yeah, like bro. A drum. That, that third fight was really like out yeah. the water. I was, I was like, wow. Because the second fight was fucking cool. Yeah. They got down. Yeah. That third fight. I don't know what happened. That dude. third fight, Max been on that apex, bro. <laughs> yeah, he been fucking. <laughs> he's been on Max been playing them ranks. video games too much, bro. But um, now, you know what's funny is that was sad to see because I'm a, first of all, I like both the fighters. Yeah, same. But Max is just such, he, Max is a great champion in my opinion. And Volkanovski is a great champion in my opinion. And they're both, I think deep down genuinely, they're both really good guys. Right. So it's like, you know, uh, I would have loved to seen Max win, but you know, it doesn't hurt me to see Volkanovski win. Exactly. Right. Um, so my but, prediction was, I thought that Max Holloway, no, I thought that Alexander Volkanovski was going to take it, but I was rooting for Max Holloway just because yeah. I'm a bigger fan of him, I think. Yeah. What about you? Dude, I just wanted a good fight, and that's what we got. Like, I wasn't rooting for anyone, just because I was like, I was, just, I like being neutral when it comes to like certain fights like that. Yeah, yeah, but um, but nah, yeah, like Volkanovski, dude. If I could, and he's so quick with it too, bro. Like, he just gets in, does his damage, ba 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 ba, comes out, comes and out. Comes back in. Yeah, dude, comes in. Kickboxing dude. is notorious for that shit, bro. Yeah, dude, he's like a little honey badger, bro. He just gets in there, ba 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 ba, a little honey out. badger gets out. Catches okay. his breath, does his thing, keeps his guard up, gets back in. Bop, 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 bop. And dude, the thing that's nuts, dude, tell me if I was the only one seeing this, but like it blew my mind. How, not People were saying, oh my gosh, he's so fast. What blew my mind wasn't how fast he was. Mm -hmm. It was how fast he was, but at the same time, precise. Yeah. He was, right. dude, every he, shot was so <laughs> accurate, bro. Right. bro. He was landing every shot. Exactly. I was like, dude. how is this guy? It was almost, I was like, dude, I don't understand how someone's brain and eye receptors could freaking, you know, re like. recept the light coming off <laughs> the other object in front of them that quickly and precisely land those strikes. I was like, dude, it, it was nuts. Yeah, I was watching it at a party and I was watching it with my friend Caleb. Yeah. And we were watching it on the projector. And I was just like, bro, dude. He's not getting hit. And yeah. literally every single time, once we turned around, it just, whoosh, whoosh, like everything just going straight past him. And then he just returns with another one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was, it was crazy, bro. That was some crazy speed. That was, you know, I got to ask you, like, because like you're one of the shorter fighters, you're going to be fighting into like, uh, light heavyweight and they're all taller. Yeah. How does, how does wrestling fare like against like taller people? Okay. So that's like, I get that question a lot. Like a lot of people ask me, Cause I wrestled heavyweights last season and 
a lot of people are like, oh yeah, how do you like wrestling taller people? Dude, I love wrestling taller people. And the same applies for fighting. Right. It, 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 well, here's the reason I love, let me tell you first why I love wrestling tall people. Because you're closer it's because, to their legs? It's because it's so easy to <laughs> so get on their down. legs. Yeah. They can't sprawl in time. And I'm lightning quick, bro. Like, I'm I'm going to be the quickest fighter they've ever seen at 205s. That's just the way it is. So, so now not only are they not bent down in a stance, they're standing straight up and they got their hands up. Dude, these guys' legs, I'm going to snatch them up all day, every day, whenever I want. Mm. I'm going to be like, oh, let me touch your leg. Let me touch your leg. Bop, let me touch your leg. With ease. With ease, bro. With ankle pick them. Did you see what? Remember when DC ankle picked Derek Lewis? <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but DC fought Derek Lewis and everyone was like, oh yeah, Derek's. I was like, guys, DC is such a superior wrestler. He's literally just going to, uh, you know, just wrestle. wrestle. Yeah, he's just going to wrestle wrestling. him. And he literally snapped him down into a front headlock and then just ankle picked him. And I was like, oh <laughs> my God, dude, it was the funniest thing ever. It was great. But no, so yeah, like I was saying, I like fighting taller people. I like um, I like wrestling taller people. People are like, oh yeah, but reach, blah, 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 blah. It's like, bro, none of that matters. You know, everyone, like right that's, the beauty, that's the beauty of fighting is that if there's you always learn how to, to counter with. Yeah, exactly. If you learn how to use your body correctly, there's always strengths and there's always weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fortunately- my strengths are better than anybody else and they're going to find out, you know, we already the champ. They just don't know it yet, but we know it yet. Dude. So, so, uh, once I get out there, bro, it's going to be a rude awakening for the light heavyweight division. And Francis, don't think you're safe out there either, bro, because Ooh. once I get that light heavyweight strap, you already know I'm coming up to heavyweight for the super fight. I'm going to take your head off, bro. Oh that's my the double gosh. champ status. That's, that's the double oh champ my status. Gosh. Hey, you got it in you. No cap. That's the double champ status. So, um, oh, and I would love freaking uh, nothing more than freaking Frosted Fingertip Boy, your boy, Israel Adesanya, to try to come up to 205s, bro. Smash that fool, then smash my dude at 205, then smash Francis. Oh, bro. I don't know, bro. Call that a three-piece uh, three three in a soda. Three-piece in a soda? Three-piece in a soda, bro. Nah, I'm playing with you. I know that's your boy. What did <laughs> what'd y'all what'd think of the, the, the fights this past weekend? I just made a video on it. Really? Yeah, my on what I thought of the Israel Desanya fight, dude. Wow. I thought the fight what, was pretty. What'd boring. What'd you think? Yeah, I wish I yeah. fucking reacted to it, bro. That, that fight I was pretty. What, yeah, it was. Boring. What'd you think was so boring about it? Look at, they fought. Like, remember that rose? I said in the video. This I'm repeating exactly what I'm saying, basically. Yeah, yeah. That rose fight with Carla. Yeah. That nothing at all happened. Yeah. It wasn't like that. That's like, actually nothing in a fight. Yeah. But these guys. For what they were saying and this and that, I get it. You know what they always say, like, um, oh, we're trying to defend this title. Oh, we dude, put on a show. Yeah. You're the style bender. Yeah. Show us some style. Dude, he styled on him, bro. Nah. He is <laughs> a counter <laughs> he is a counter nah. striker. I don't I don't care what anybody says, bro. He is a <laughs> counter striker. As the challenger, you are supposed to challenge the person. All right. He didn't challenge him at all. He didn't. Yeah, but here's and when the thing. he and when he tried yeah, to, he didn't do champion. shit in there. He should also Listen. be able to kick someone's ass. He, exactly. Okay. He was whooping no. his ass. So, so I'm gonna like, come in neutral mm -hmm. on this position. Okay, let me come in neutral because I'm so totally on Izzy's there, side. Bro. There's truth to what you're saying. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's some cons in there. Okay. Okay. So okay. I, so I, what I like to call this is I like to call this the John Jones effect. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> Izzy GSP literally team. saw John Jones's game plan and his blueprint. And he's like, I am going to copy this rule. So basically he got to the top, he got to the belt, right? Now he holds the belt. So now it's not like the UFC could use anything over him. He's the champ. So some they get, if the UFC wants him out of there, they got to have someone beat him. Right. But the thing is, is he's too good to where if he just stalls and stays on the outside and just gets by the fight, he'll just get by and win by, you know, being 1% better, 2% exactly. better that, than like, the other I fighter. know Izzy's potential. Do you know? This guy is fucking insane. Exactly. And I want to see that when yeah. it's time Bro, to shine. Bro, you should have just... saw that when you saw his rise, but you're not seeing his rise. Yeah. You're seeing him at the top already. Yeah, exactly. That's But, but that's yeah. like, he's giving banger after banger. Yeah. What more can you ask for? Yeah, that's that's and the that's unfortunate. What... That's the unfortunate part is like, like you said, during the rise, right? Mm -hmm. Because he needed to get to that strap. So you saw his true potential. Whereas yeah. now he's trying to hold on to it. Why? Because first of all, he has championship status. Second of all, the money, right. right? So he's like, why would I put myself out there and do all this crazy stuff and potentially get caught, right? When I know I could easily just pick this guy apart from the outside, play it safe, and not even have to work that hard. Bro. And he and 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 I'll admit it. 
he can do that. He's mm-hmm. that good to where he could do that. Fuck yeah, he is. But but if he were to engage in a dog fight, ooh, he's been in a be dog dangerous. fight. No, no, no. Listen, listen. And he's been in dog fights like when he fought Kevin Gastelum and stuff like that. That was yeah, persevered. Right. right. But I'm saying you saw how dangerous it could potentially get. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's getting rocked. True. So True. he doesn't want to enter that danger zone. Right. You know? He wants to play it safe. He's like, mm-hmm. why would I even risk getting clipped or getting in this dog fight and putting that, you know, that, um, you know, damage on my freaking health bar, you know? And when he's like, I could just, you know, stay from the outside, play it safe, play it smart, follow the John Jones blueprint. Yeah. And stay and the champion just for a while. Izzy. Izzy, yeah. It's just easy. It's just easy to blame Izzy because he's the champion. Yeah, that's but the, the same part time, I don't like, bro. Like, Jared Cannonier oh, didn't do shit either. Didn't do anything, bro. Like, if you're going to challenge, you really want that Jared Cannonier, you suck. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Jared Cannonier, you freaking suck. You're trash. I'll come down to MMA lab and freaking fight you anytime, any day, bro. Let me know. Anytime, bro. any day, bro. You know where I'm at, bro. I'm out here in SoCal. Hit me up, bro. Hit my line. Bro, that Anytime. Is sorry, continue. I'm sorry I had to do that. Bro. I had to do that. Huh? That's three, three freaking <laughs> three or four call outs, bro. I had to do that. For everybody, All right, my bro. bad. Well, sorry for interrupting you. What was but you yeah, saying? what's it called? What was I saying? You were saying you're, how everybody's playing. It's not the just blame. Izzy. Yeah, 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 it's not, not just Izzy. Izzy. Yeah. Jared Cannonier is at fault too. Like, bro, how are you going to challenge the champion and not want to win? Yeah. Like, no, you're not trying to survive. That's not this kind of fight. Yeah. This is you need to beat this guy in order to win. Bro, and yeah. that's been his past three um, opponents. Rob, um, Marvin, and uh, Bunsen, what's it no. called? Brunt, not Brunson. Wait, who are we talking about, Jared? We're talking about Izzy. Izzy, oh. okay, so We're no, Izzy, Izzy Whitaker. Everybody, every, yeah, Whitaker, um, Marvin, and recently, uh, Jared. Why at the final 10 seconds, you're going to try and wrestle? Like, yeah, you're already, that was you're already down 3-1. Yeah. I saw yeah. it on the monitor, and I was just like, oh. And I was like, I was like, all right. And that's the part that frustrated me, too. And I think we already mentioned this when we were talking, mm-hmm. is that I was telling, um, I was telling OKK that, you know, the part that frustrated me so much about Jared when he was fighting is like, you see at the end how he was, you know, faking those takedowns or going for the takedowns. He was getting easy against the cage. Dude, he should have been doing that first, second, third round from the very exactly. beginning. Even Bringing if he the didn't plan. The champion. Listen, even if he didn't plan on getting the takedown, at least let him know, hey, is he be aware that that, that takedown's present, there, right. right? That it could be potentially yep. coming. Because you saw what, what's the name? Jan Blankovich or whatever. He did to Izzy. You know, Izzy's, Izzy's easy to take down. If you're a good wrestler, they won't feed Izzy any good wrestler because they know he'll get mauled. If you were to fight a good D1 wrestler, and just wait, one of my boys, Bo Nickel, from freaking wrestle at Penn State, he's coming up on the scene, bro. He would, I guarantee you, he would maul freaking Izzy right now. What's, what's uh, uh, Bo fighting at? I remember you mentioned him. 185s, I'm 185s? Sure. 185s. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's fighting at 185s. But, but the thing is they're smart right for example oh yeah with this whole Pereira deal so Mm -hmm. Alex Pereira for those of you who don't know he used to fight in a kickboxing organization glory kickboxing Kickboxing. same as uh and yeah same as Izzy Izzy. a lot of fighters actually and he was up 2-0 against uh Izzy he beat him once knocked him out a second time cold and so what they did I'd say talk about the the other fight where he was uh where he was Izzy was winning up until that last 30. That same, same, with Glover and, hey. uh, same with Glover and Yuri. Hey, but who got starched? Who got starched? <laughs> 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 who got starched, right? You know, that's the, name, that's the beauty of fighting. Isn't it? Bro, you're, you're about to make me winning. see red, bro. Freaking, Stop talking about easy like that, bro. Um, Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen. Yeah, yeah. Anderson was on his back getting plowed by fucking... Oh, he's getting mauled. And then the yeah, last 30, 30 Sonnen, seconds of the, fourth ra- of the fifth round, the last round. Triangle. Triangle choke. So, so back to my point. That's so anyway, from Chael, bro. So this is what the UFC yeah. does. This is the UFC blueprint, bro. This is exactly what they do. Mm-hmm. So if people think, oh, it's the best of the best going against each other, it's not until you get to like the very top, but then at the same time, still no, because look, right? So you get a guy like Alex Pereira. Well, he comes over to the UFC, right? And, it, and don't, don't get me wrong. He probably didn't even like, I don't think Pereira, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone dif- knows different, but I don't think Pereira dipped down was probably like, oh, I want to go fight in the UFC. UFC probably bribed them. They're like, hey, let's get this guy come over here. Get him let's, fight. Izzy. Get him get him some fights against strikers, because mm-hmm. this is what they do. Wreck these strikers, because they know they know if anyone was to grapple him, they would maul him because he's a kickboxer. He doesn't have any grappling, right? So they say, let's feed him, you know, this striker. Pereira kills him. Because, dude, he's a kickboxing world champion. Of course he's going to kill him on the feet. Then he fights this other striker. Kills him. Kickboxing world champion. Of course he's going to kill him on the feet. 
they're not gonna and because why because they're trying to build that hype you know yeah, trying dude. to build that hype that way they could have them refight this izzy for I'm that trilogy of. and make fucking boot boot this goes, is what i'm afraid of that they get the hype yeah i'm gonna fuck him up this yeah. guy's not gonna be breathing when i leave the octagon yeah and then we get to the fight and nothing happens. Yeah, that's well, not gonna happen. Hey, that's not gonna that's happen not with the prayer fight. Happen. I'm, I'm hoping you can't that even it does. Fear it, bro. That's yeah. not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there's no not, way. Like, there's there's two reasons that's not gonna happen, and you could add to this. Well, number one is because Izzy. I know. Listen, no matter what anyone says, because I know how I am, and I'm and very competitive. Haunting. I could relate to Izzy on a competitive level, right? On that part, I know oh, yeah, that yeah. it is haunting Izzy. It's that haunting, he has right? those two losses. So there's a part of him that is scared. And it's haunting him that Pereira is here now and he's going to fight Pereira. But at the same time, there's a part of him that's happy. Right. Because now he has a chance to avenge himself. And if Izzy, if Izzy is coming to avenge himself, he's not going to do this whole, oh, you know, I'm a poke from the outside. A guy like Izzy wants to prove a point. If I was down 0-2 to a guy and I felt like I was the better fighter, coming in the next fight, I'm not going to just try to barely get by the guy. I'm going to go in there that I'm going to maul. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to make a point that I am a way better fighter. And so I feel like Izzy will do that. I feel yeah. like with this fight, he's going to do that. And if he doesn't, and I if mean, he doesn't. It is what it and is. If he doesn't, yeah. he's still if champ. He, yeah, he's Fuck still it. champ. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah, you're right. Bro, he's still but champ. To piggyback off what you said, like how it's a business, like there is a clear just juxtaposition off of how um they built up Alex Perea and then how they built up Blood Diamond, which is um I don't know if you guys know him, but it's like um, yeah, out of he's on his team. Yeah. But they literally fed him, like, his first fight, like, some crazy-ass wrestler. And all he did was get wrestled, like, the entire match. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. That's how you so, beat kickboxers. You wrestle them to the floor, and they take out their legs. Yeah. The thing is, they're not feeding him. They didn't feed him, like, a good striker to yeah. show, showcase how really good he was type stuff. Yeah. They fed they him. They didn't yeah. want to. And that's the thing with, like, ooh, me, ooh, right? Like, listen. Ooh, go ahead. I, go ahead. Because I have something yeah, so crazy. Don't forget that. I'm not yeah, But I'm going to say, like, for example, for, like, me, right, in the future when I'm fighting, this is the reality. Is like, listen, I'm, I ain't afraid of no man. I'll fight whoever. But me. you know, you know, I'm young, handsome, charismatic, <laughs> stud, right? right? So they're gonna be like, this "Oh, sexy BJ Ray. I'm sexy BJ Ray." Right? You know, <laughs> I'm what the ladies dream about at night. Uh huh. So they're gonna be, they're gonna be like, "Okay, we can make money off this kid, right?" Uh -huh. And he's gonna win, and he's really good at grappling. You know, he could take guys down, he could smash him, he could take him down, he could submit him. But I also got, I got hands, I got power too. So they're gonna be like, "Okay, we can make money off this kid." So they're not going to, knowing that grappling is my expertise, they're not going to feed me really good grapplers. They're going to say, oh, let's give Brayden these schmojo strikers that he could just take down and grapple with ease, mm -hmm. kill them to make them look super dominant. That way, by the time he gets to the champion or whoever it is, we can hype it up as, you know, just this such dominant, young, mm -hmm. smasher wrestler, dude. Dude, and, everybody needs and the everyone's, vision, this yeah, and that. Yeah, exactly. And everyone's going to want to see the fight. And that's the reality of the fight game. You know, to where even if they fed me a grappler, it wouldn't matter because I'm I'm the best. Right. But, you know, um, that's just the reality of it. But what were you saying? Because the way that we're saying that all these kickboxers are being fed like shit strikers or shit strikers compared to them, bro. Yeah. For Izzy, it was not that same way, bro. Like they fed him literally the Paulo best Costa, of the best. They said, Whitaker. No, I'm talking about like wrestlers that they fed oh. him. The Brunson's, the Yoel. Yoel was fucking trash. Yoel was yeah. stupid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That one was. Is he got a dude? Okay. So, dude, this is why. This is so frustrating. I'm going to hate to cut you off. I'm sorry, bro. I'm such a nerd when it comes to this. So, anyway. I know what you're about This is so frustrating because the only wrestlers that freaking Izzy fought was Brunson. Brunson, you're trash. Yeah, Brunson. Brunson. But he has a gym in North Carolina. Brunson, come out to Duke, bro. Come to the Duke wrestling room. He's only like an hour and a half oh, away. Yeah, not he said, far. I'll teach you a thing or two. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a wrestling clinic, bro. I'll, I'll teach you a wrestling clinic if you want. Uh, uh, Brunson, though, listen to this. Now, Blonde Brunson. Blonde Brunson's a Blonde different Brunson's story. A totally, different <laughs> totally different story, totally different right? Totally different story, bro. But, um, but Blonde Brunson, you're my hero. Um, but anyway. But Bumson? <laughs> <laughs> No sir. no, sir. No, not Bumson. Not but, uh, Bumson. <laughs> Blonde Brunson. Blonde Brunson, yeah. But um, but no, and then Yoel, okay, freaking Yoel Romero already, he's and an that, old man. That's yeah. the thing that frustrated me. Sorry to cut you off, bro, but yeah. that's the thing that frustrated me because that was like the first showing of the challenger not challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Yoel, like that he, was what is this? Yeah. I'll tell you what it is. Dirty books. I'll tell you what it is. It's called Dirty a freaking like 42 year old man. That's what it's called. However, old, he was 42, 41, yeah, was 42, or 42. Was, it's like, and that's why people would say, uh, you know, why doesn't he wrestle? Why doesn't he use his wrestling? 
because wrestling, let me tell you this, I've done it all, striking, wrestling, everything. Wrestling and grappling is way more taxing and fatiguing For sure. than You're striking using your is. Entire body. You're using your entire body, your ligaments are being strained 24 seven. You're pushing, you're yeah. pulling, keeping, you're grabbing. Exactly, keeping those tendons tight, trying to hold on to someone, hold them down, right? Even just this. Oh dude, yeah, exactly. And so, and so it's like, it comes a point, you know, where yeah, Yoel may look like a freak, but at the end of the day, he's still 42 years old. You know, so he can't, he doesn't have that gas tank to wrestle for five rounds. It's just, he doesn't, he doesn't. And on top of that, he's got freaking uh, muscles like a freaking balloon animal, you know? <laughs> so that doesn't help either because you already know guys with more muscles and stuff like that fatigue quicker. It's just yeah. the, the way it is scientifically, you know, more, takes more time for the blood to get to the muscles, right. the oxygen. Um, so yeah, so it's like, they knew Yoel wasn't going to wrestle him. They knew Yoel was going to wrestle him, which Yoel, I think if Yoel would have wrestled him, I still don't even think he would have won because I think he could have wrestled him for three rounds. And then gassed out. And then gassed out the last two. And then, yeah. And got pieced up. Just like the last two out. rounds. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and Brunson, yeah, like I said, so they're going to, I mean, listen, Izzy's the real deal. You're right. That Izzy is the real deal. Um, you know, I seen his rise, what he did to guys like Brunson you know, how he battled adversity when he fought like guys like Kevin Gastelum and stuff like that. I mean, if you look at the list of guys he's beaten, he's beaten the best of the best guys. Yeah. Um, even even like Anderson Silva. Yeah, you could say Anderson Silva's old and washed up. And and who's better than who? Like, uh, you know, legendary wise, that's a whole different story. But I mean, that's still an impressive win because Anderson still looks great. In my honest opinion, when I watch Anderson fight, Anderson still looks great. Oh, dude. Even For his boxing. age. Even yeah. Even boxing. What? Even boxing. He would have probably been more dominant in boxing. Then he would have been an MMA. What's his name? Jake Paul wants to fight him. Oh, Anderson Silva would. Piece Anderson up Jake Silva, Paul. I he think. would he would piece up Jake Paul. Dude, if, I really want to see that. If it was a real fight, if it was a real fight, I still don't believe these fights are real fights, dude. You look at the way freaking Jake Paul, you suck. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> suck. Extrapolate what I'm saying right now, bro. I'll fight you for free, okay? I'll fight you for free. Whatever you want, trash. You're a loser. Stick to Disney Channel, kid. <laughs> but uh but yeah like i was saying um anderson silva if it was a real fight between him and jake paul <laughs> he would maul him <laughs> and he's been training his son too yeah yeah Ooh, I've how's, been his seeing that shit. how's his son doing how's his son doing i haven't seen doing much good. of his son he looks um, pretty he good in the freaking couple, tiktoks and stuff i think he suffered like a couple losses but for the most part like he's looking he's looking crisp he's in the gym he's training with the best of the best he's training with the goat like He's doing well. I'm, I really look forward to seeing that. Now, is he doing MMA or is he doing? Uh, he's boxing? doing MMA. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Or is this kid, kickboxing? And no, those I think it's kickboxing. No. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. In kickboxing, here's the thing about like kickboxing and boxing. Like it's a lot more common for L's to come early on because it's just like that's just the way it is, right? It's like, and then like, I don't know why it's like that. Like I'm trying to think of like why it's like that. Or like in wrestling, kickboxing stuff like that. Like you'll see more L's in person's record, but like once it's time, like once you start your MMA professional career. It's like, and it's like all's fair in love and war, you know? Then it's like, that's when your record, you're like really- You're either like, like five and two or one and six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you're like, um, but uh, dude, one of the greatest um, inspirations for me in fighting, who mm -hmm. I'd love to try to mirror my style after, is uh, CM Punk. CM he's Punk? Like, Cause he- <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you're joking. I'm glad you're joking, bro. Cause I was like, wait a minute. No. Is there something he no. knows that I don't? No. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like oh, we're talking no, about the same bro, guy, right? That fool's trash. Oh dear God, who Dude, let that wanted, guy get an octagon, bro, bro? He thought he was Brock Lesnar, bro. Not everybody's fucking Brock Lesnar. No, no, dude. Not everybody is. Brock, Brock Lesnar was another guy. Three fights in a championship. Yeah. But Brock Lesnar's a he's dominating. But he that's was, the thing. He's smart. He well, he's he was a, a he was a WWE superstar. Um and here's the thing, people didn't give him respect because they didn't realize, dude, he was a NCAA champion wrestler. Right. You know, so he know he knew how to fight and smash people, right? He's a wrestler. So everyone thought, oh, he's a WWE guy, he's not even a real wrestler. It's like, no, the guy was one of the best wrestlers in the world at a time. So then he just comes over to UFC and just starts smashing people in freaking nature. Damn. So what if what if what was that dude? Gable Stevenson? Gable Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah, Gable, yeah, Gable Stevenson, bro. Yeah. Like after his WWE like run, you think he's coming over to UFC for a couple? Because I remember I, him saying like something like 
Yeah, like, I do. Wise, I would do love it. to see it. Okay, right. so Gable Stevenson, this guy's a freak of nature. He wrestles for the University of Minnesota, won the Olympics at 21 years old. A year ago, was it 2020? Or this year, was it 2022 Tokyo? Well, I thought or, it was 2020. What was the Tokyo Olympics? Was it 2021? I want to say 2021. But they but called it know. 2020 Olympics because that was the year it was yeah. supposed to happen, right? But they canceled it because COVID? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck so it was in Tokyo. He won yeah, the Olympics. Cool. Um, dude's a freak of nature. Like, best probably college wrestler we've ever seen in the history of wrestling. Um, probably like in my opinion, the like one of the best wrestlers, probably the best wrestler we've it ever was seen. 2022 was it Summer Games? Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, no, 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 wait, Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics 2020. Yeah. Yeah, you were scaring me because I was like, We're in summer. No, because look, it, it came up right here 2022 Summer Olympics, but that's not it. She was yeah. probably published. No, I'm playing. So, he, um, yeah, so he already, uh, he already signed with the WWE. Um, so I think, well, he claimed to be retired. He left his shoes on the mat. There's talks of him saying he's going to come back for one more year and wrestle for Minnesota, but I really don't see the point. He's so dominant. Everyone knows he's the best at heavyweight. And, um, and so he signed with WWE. I think that would be a great move. First go to WWE, become a superstar, make your name, and then bounce over to UFC once you're already WWE superstar. And then, uh, you know, make a real buck. And then once you're done with the UFC, you go back to WWE. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Get you keep going money. back and forth. Because there's the thing is like, you know, well, a guy like Gable, it doesn't even matter if you didn't go to WWE. He'll already sign a fat contract right off the bat because of his wrestling reputation. But it'll only help a bigger contract when he comes over. You know, by the time, if mm-hmm. he were to go to the WWE with his recu- wrestling accolades and then the WWE status, he would already come over to the UFC and they would sign him a multi-million dollar contract. Like right? nothing. Right off the bat, he'd be making a few mil fight. Would so, you go to the WWE? Uh, I'd, I'd wear like it. super tight spandex. Yeah, I consider it. You know, a lot of would you art. Go super tight spandex or like speedos or like which? Where would you go? Like, um, like high what boots. Would you, what speedos would you retire? <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of. Well, I'd prefer to go commando. Uh, Same. I'm, but, I'm doing um, it right now. But unfortunately, I don't think they'd allow that. So I don't know. Probably. Uh, I don't know, maybe like John Cena, like just a pair of cargo shorts or something like that, and some Air Force Ones or something. <laughs> some Air Force Ones, bandana. I can see that shit. You know, lie, yeah. Would you be uh, the doctor of thugonomics or like? Yeah, something. Of start rapping and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm BJ Ray. You're about to die today. Like, yes, <laughs> sir. Like, yes, sir. <laughs> but, <be> <laughs> but um, but no. I mean, what's funny is so the WWE recruits a lot of Division One heavyweight wrestlers because they're always looking for big guys that you know no even though it's fake wrestling a lot of the movements are still the same you know and mm-hmm. you need strong athletic young people that are big and have the have a look now about you're them. just playing wrestling. yeah exactly now you're playing the part uh our heavyweight from duke his name is jacob casper he was our heavyweight two years ago at duke and or three years ago and he actually got recruited to wwe he's doing great oh yeah, yeah him and his brother they're called the nice. creed, creed brothers and um, oh those fuckers yeah what? yeah yeah and he's uh he's doing great and so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of connects there, so yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see uh, what happens in the future. But um, definitely right now, my focus is you know after college is MMA. Um, but like I said, you know, uh, legacy ain't going to feed your family, you know. What? So so wherever the money's right, that's what I'm gonna have to do, you know. Okay. When do you think you're, or when do you finish college? Uh, I'll finish college and I'll graduate uh, next spring, spring 2023. Nice. Yeah. So when do you think you'll when do you think you'll have your first MMA match and when do you think you'll have your first UFC match? So the way I kind of see it playing out is I get back, you know, uh April, May, May pretty much from school, finish my last wrestling season, start training for about, you know, May, June, July, August, about 3 4 months just training. Start taking some amateur fights, you know, take an amateur fight and you know, October, November, December, like three amateur fights. Done with the amateur fights because I, you, you know, because I'm just gonna smash those guys. It's, gonna, it's right. not even gonna be fair, right? First round, shit? um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be dom- dominant finishes. for all first round finishes, yeah, that's Side what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. Them? Yeah, yeah, any way I want, take down to smash, take down to submission, smash, smash. yeah, Dude, take the down way to that smash. you said any way I want, bro, it kind of like haunts because, like, I remember joining wrestling and then realizing how much control someone else can have over my life on the map, bros. Yeah, it was dude, crazy, even, bro. It's even a scary, like grabbing your wrist. Grabbing your wrist, you fuck. feel that strength. You're, you're just like, you like the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's a scary feeling, bro. Because you're like, wow. Imagine how strong Khabib's grip is. It's like when yeah. he just goes like that to you. Getting yeah. cradled? Dude, people don't realize how oh bad gosh. it is to get 
like how demoralizing it is to get out grappled, bro. It just sucks. <laughs> dude, because you're like, dude, this guy can you literally can either hold me have down and do whatever he wants. Your face yeah, eating dirt or your ass in the air showing every like it's, exactly. It's not like masculine at all. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get bitch. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah, bro. you could, you could get great, you know? Yeah. So like uh, but yeah, so anyway, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. But yeah, anyway, I want, you know, I got these hands are heavy, right? So that ain't a problem. Punch so, me in the gut right now. I want to test how heavy it is. You ain't down. That's good. You know, you know, you know what I got going on right now. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah. The other hand works though, just like Jerron said last time. Yeah. The other after, hand works. After, after I bet we got to get it. Well, I don't want to break I my hand. I don't want to break my hand. I don't know. Like, your other hand. I got flab like, now. Like, I got no, I'm saying he's like Goku. Whatever hand I hit him with, just like I don't want to shatter my hand. Like break my hand on him, you know? Because he's just I man of steel. Like that. Yeah, he's just nasty. Like it's a that. big risk, but yeah, for content. Yeah, but uh, what's another broken hand? Yeah, exactly. I got a broken tooth. Like, fuck. Just go ahead. Go nah, we're we going to get that fixed. <laughs> I'm going to get it fixed. Yeah. Nah, I keep, I will get it fixed, bro, but I keep buying camera equipment. How much does something like that go for? Like 2K. 2K? Wait. Really? That much? Why? What is the actual material of the procedure? Because my sister, she's a dental hygienist, and she uh, she fixed mine for like for me for free. I took the tooth wrestling. What the fuck? So I mean, if it's like you, you'd have, you had to pay for like the material, but if it was just like you needed like some, I of the think goods. it was like procedure image. I don't. I actually didn't like look that far into it. Oh, let me talk to you. Just Google search yeah. real let quick. Me talk to her. Fresh. No, I didn't Google search. I went <laughs> yeah. up to talk to him. Don't play me. Oh yeah. yeah no, nah, no, nah, I got you, bro. I got you. I'll hit her up. Don't <laughs> leave me hanging. Oh Don't my show. bad, bro. No, you good. You yeah. good? Yeah. I mean, for us, Give me a bro. Yes, sir. Can I get his on G? Oh yeah, bro. No, I'm playing, bro. You know, you know, I ain't afraid of kids, bro. So would you go friendships? Oh, no, I, I would never go French tips, bro. <laughs> what about y'all? I definitely got to finish that. What was that? French tips? French tips. I, I, I saw, well, I used to get, like, manicures. <clears throat> and, like, French tip. And, like, French tip is, like, what Izzy has. And he, like, puts the, like, little white on the tips oh, of his nails. No. Bro. But, yeah, the nah, farthest I go fat. is, like, clear, I go with manicure. Clear. That's probably Dude, that's yeah. too feminine for me. With no, manicures, pedicures is yeah. fine. If you want to get a manicure, pedicure, be hygiene, that's completely fine. But do you get a clear, clear uh, nail polish finish? Just wow. to have like that shine, yeah. Just to just to make it look a little oh, more. I never do. I just they just uh, scrape me down, make me round, like SpongeBob. Okay. Shame me now, make me round. <laughs> 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 but um, but uh, nah, yeah, that's yeah. Izzy's feminine, bro. I ain't about that. I wouldn't say you feminine. Know. I'd say he's flamboyant, bro. Well, you know, there's been talks about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't I don't know it. what you're talking about. Don't even Pe- say. It. People are suspicious, bro. Of his, people are of sus- his love life. <laughs> Hey. He wouldn't even mind their own business. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, bro, I feel once you reach a level of. <laughs> oh, like certain, Bucky's dad? <laughs> yeah. Once you reach a level of certain, you know what I'm saying? You don't really care about how men perceive you. That oh, itself is pretty. And you're like, what are you going to do about it? That's what I'm saying. Like, what can you do about it? He's, he's going to get socked. You're going to get socked by French tips. Like, he's just so freaking. Alpha that bro, men are just per- fucking. Pereira is going to kill this dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. Pereira is gonna get humped listen, like Costa. Listen, I'm calling. First it, of all, you got this one femboy who does his lotion and his lid and his chapstick and his frosted tips and his little watch. I put and on then, lotion. And then and then, then, and then listen to this. I mean, listen, lotion ain't bad, but you get the point. You know, he's just very just he cares for himself. Yeah, a bit too yeah, much. yeah, a little bit too much. But anyway, then you got this freaking dude. From the favelas. Not even from the favelas. This dude was from the freaking tribes, bro. His family <laughs> ancestry. I was literally just watching Eating a documentary on it. I was just watching a documentary. This guy's like family ancestry is from like from the like tribes the in deep Brazil. Yeah, yeah, somewhere like that. And then he moved out into the favelas and grew up like dirt poor, bro. This guy's a killer, dude. He's That's what I'm saying. Like, no disrespect to Izzy. Like, I know he's your boy. But he's got to watch <laughs> out, bro. He's got to watch out. He definitely guy, has to watch Pereira out, bro. Is a killer. There's, Pereira is a killer. Yeah. And he's and if you don't think for a second that Pereira's gonna come in there guns blazing just as well, Pereira's gonna come in there trying to, you know, knock Izzy's head off. He's I'm not gonna, gonna watch the first two rounds and then see if I want to continue watching. I was I was because yeah. if I see them just circling around for those first two rounds, I'm I'm done. The same way, the same way we talking about my boy type stuff. We gotta talk about your boy Sean Strickland and what the hell he was oh, doing. Oh yeah, what happened with Alex, that? Bro? Like what happened with that, dude? You okay, didn't look so too bad about Sean. Though. Here's the thing about Sean that people don't know. So I trained with Sean. 
Mm-hmm. You know, Sean in, Strickland, by the way. Sean Strickland, yeah. Out of he Corona, just fought, California. I was out of Corona, California. Out of Anaheim. He, he, no, 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 he fought out of Corona, California. Sean. Today? Yeah. Or no, Saturday? No, he fights no, out Saturday. Of he fights out of Corona. He went to Corona High School. I thought it said Anaheim. <laughs> no, Corona. No, it, always, it, corona. It, it always says Corona. Like and Kevin Holland, yeah, you know Kevin Holland? He's from Riverside. He's from and so in an interview, he was like, hey, uh, and he was like, and yeah. Sean, you know, make them Corona boys proud or whatever <laughs> like that. So, um, nah, but anyway, so yeah, he's from Corona, California, and he just fought uh, Alex Pereira for a title contending fight. Um, but uh, yeah, so I train, I, I train with him here and there. And uh, tough dude, you know, real tough dude. And he's got great hilarious grab, guy, bro. So My hilarious, bro. So you're with the his grappling guy, would have definitely taken out Alex. And his grappling, his grappling would have taken out Alex. Wow. I don't know if his grappling could have taken out Izzy because I feel like Izzy's uh, grappling and his takedown defense and stuff has got to be somewhat better because he's, he's been he's in the MMA game for longer, for. Yeah, right? Yeah, he needs to stand up. But um, but yeah, Pereira, Pereira's a freaking Bambi on ice when it comes to the grappling game, you know. Strickland's a beast. I've rolled with him many times, and the dude's got some serious grappling that not a lot of people knew about, you know, um, and still they don't know about. But he's just, you know, he's just a brawler, dude. That's just Strickland. He's like, ah, you know, I want to come out there and punch you right in your face. He's that. He's just an old school type brawler, you know, likes to spar a lot and stuff. And so, you know, he went in with the, you know, his game plan was like, hey, you know, I'm just gonna stand in front of there and strike this guy. And in my opinion, it was an awful game plan. But it was, it was he even crazy, said it himself. Awful, he knew he fucked like, up. Yeah. I don't know. He was calling himself the best striker in the press conference, bro, next to <laughs> next to Alex and um name, but I don't know. Talking shit with everybody there, bro. I, yeah. I really like that part. Yeah, bro. me too. I, I loved like it. That part. I was like, Hilarious. I can, I can do nothing but smile at that press conference. No, it's was... like it's not like he's talking shit to hurt you, it's talking shit to make jokes. Yeah. And you know it's jokes. Yeah, exactly. But no, that's the thing that it, concerns though. me too, huh? is he like slap for it though. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Moving on. He got slept, bro. Yeah. But anyway, um, but no, yeah. So it is what it is. Like my concern is just this: is that you know the way he trains. Uh, I know he's heard this plenty of times, but you know he does a lot of hard sparring and stuff like that. And your chin can only take so much. You know, it's only a matter of time before you get a glass jaw after getting hit in the head so yeah. much. See, that's so I'm because that strike didn't look like it. That was strike like, didn't look like it was like anything crazy. Yeah, it just it thing. was just a little. Yeah, it just hit him across the chin. And so and I don't know. If, him, I don't and then know. he just finished again with another one. I don't know. That's Pereira what I'm saying. I'm a crazy left hook, bro. And that's yeah. what he was known for. It, yeah, his left that's hook is crazy. But, but that wasn't landed, one of those crazy punches. Strickland's got it. And you got to remember, Strickland's got a strong chin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Strickland's been taking some hits in the past. Like, True. Straight, Strickland's no one to, you know, get wobbled easily. So he's a very durable fighter. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it was just perfectly landed, you know, and he just got caught. But I mean, he'll be back around. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, for sure. He'll be back around. But I just wish you think he'll ever take on Izzy. Nah, I don't it's know. Too far. He just lost. Like. <laughs> yeah, I just wish, dude. I wish because we worked his wrestling so much and his gra- with him on his grappling so and much for it. for a period of time. And I wish that he would have used it and shown it because he would have won the fight. He would have won the fight if he would have taken him down or even just threatened to take down. Like I said, back to that, you know, uh, you know. Cannoneer versus Izzy fight. If he would, if Strickland would have just threatened the takedown right off the bat, that way Pereira knows. Okay, I can't just stand straight up and strike and throw my hook. I got to be aware that that takedown's there. I feel like because a lot of people forget about the whole wrestling part of MMA. Yeah, like it's there's just, so many it's times the UFC's, where it's like you could switch it up. I'd say yeah. it's really taxing to like do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like not even in their like. Yeah, UFC's experience. trying to move away from it a little bit too with the recruiting. You know, they're trying to. You know, back in the day, they would just pull any good fighters and you saw a lot more grapplers and stuff. Nowadays, they're, you know, trying to focus more on strikers. They, they try to keep it about, you know, 75% strikers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they got yeah, freaking... The remaining 30, 35% freaking wrestlers, grapplers. People who don't understand, like, not respect. They don't appreciate the fight game type yeah. stuff. So they don't see, like, the whole aspect of, like, the whole grappling and they don't, like, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, but... um. But when I was first learning grappling, bro, eh, not that important. Huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you done any like uh, wrestling? Did you do anything like that in the past? Oh, yeah, I used to do wrestling at Empire when oh, I was a kid too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's With, right. With uh, what's his name, Vinny? Vinny? Yeah. I can never know that how to say Pac- Pac- Pac-Lib or Pac-Lib. Pac-Lib. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, I was, yeah. I'm always about to say Placeb. Placeb. That's what I always feel like saying too. Hacklem. Yeah, Vinny's my boy, bro. He was, you know, Vinny was the first person I ever wrestled in my entire life. Yeah, he yeah, was one of my. Yeah, bro. He's just a little kid. I walk my ass all the time. He's a little kid, a couple years younger than me. Come I think he in. had like a mohawk at the time. Yeah, he, he did. He did. He had a mohawk. Yeah, he whipped my ass in lacrosse. 
In the cross? Yeah. Does Centennial have a cross team? They now did they do, my, yeah. my senior year. And you played? Yeah. Wow. I stopped yeah, yeah, I used to do wrestling. I used to do jiu-jitsu. Wow, dude, that's awesome. But um, but yeah, so and I really like it. Like, I, like right now, I have a broken toe, so like I don't want to like just one gentle touch and it breaks again. How'd you hear your toe? Huh? How'd you hear your toe? We were I we were getting into a fucking pool. It was locked. <laughs> I hopped the fence and I landed on it wrong. <laughs> just being a dumbass, honestly. Bro, How did awful. you land? Like I don't know, bro. It was with the croc. I feel like once I stepped, my foot slid. slid that yeah. no socks. Cause I literally so like I when landed, you dropped, I slid and I freaking felt it. When it, when you dropped, like you dropped to your knees, and I was like, "What the hell? What happened?" But then you like opened, you opened the thing. It, it didn't process. Did the pain process until like? like no, no. Once I landed on it, I felt it. I was like, "Shit!" Oh, That's shit. why I went down to my knees. I was like, "Nope, something's wrong." And I took off my croc and checked right away. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I broke my toe. But once this thing's healed, I want to get back to training. Yeah. My dad's been like doing some shadow boxing I've for like the past that. month now. <laughs> really? My dad used to be a wrestler at Corona High, I remember. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. He That's was awesome. like super close with Joe and Paul Herrera. Okay. They, yeah, because they wrestled. They all wrestled at Corona. And then right now, what's his name? Paul Herrera is at uh, Brian Ortega's corner. Yeah. He was there. Excuse me. Sorry, You're good. Um, No, yeah. Um, Long day. Long day. Um, no, yeah, he was in Ortega's corner when he fought, uh, what's his name? Volkanovski. Volkanovski, dude. Volkanovski's so nasty, bro. I know I already said that before, but he's- No, nah, like, you can say it again, honestly. Bro, it's like- This disgusting. guy's nasty. That's bro. like who I want to train with, He needs bro. all the props that you can get, bro. That's I'd want to train with him, him or Charles Oliveira, just because yeah. of the jiu-jitsu. I love the jiu-jitsu. Pereira needs a hookup with Oliveira and work on his jiu-jitsu because of Pereira- He needs well, his ground thing. game. Here's the thing. I don't Brasileño los dos. Listen, he's in the best place to learn ground game. Freaking Brazil, bro. Like, yeah. he, he has so much good jiu-jitsu out there. For sure, like, yeah. If he links with those guys, he could get he could get that ground game quickly, you know, right. if he stays committed to it. But, um, but yeah, I would say, um, I would say just that's what Pereira needs to do, bro. Not even worry. He's such a good striker already. Don't even worry about it. Could you imagine if Izzy came out freaking and wrestled? <laughs> That would be all. Oh, that would, that would it, actually make my day, bro. That would actually that would make. I would love to see Izzy wrestle. And he's been saying it too that he only, wants to submit people. The only time I really liked, like when he showcased what uh, little grappling he had, was against Kelvin Gastelum, bro. Like every yeah. time he got threatened with the takedown, every single time, bro, it was always like he always like he threatened a, a submission back, bro. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, like this guy's like next level. Like even like that, bro. Like chess matches, dude, I respect chess match matches so much. Like you see both of these fighters like not really like going K-makers and this and that, like going at it, but they're being precise with their fights. And yeah. you see it, you're like, nah, these fuckers know what they're doing. But yeah. like in this one, I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't see it. I didn't see anything like, he said a masterclass. I didn't see a masterclass fight. Yeah, and that's Can why people- Can you not see mad. a masterclass that's, fight no. when, when, when Izzy didn't get touched? That's masterclass, hit and not get hit. No, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. the thing. I can agree with you to a certain extent. But the way, good, but the way Izzy class. presented himself in his uh, conferences, he was like, oh, I'm an easy work. Dude, I'm going like to come out there and smash this guy. I'm going to finish him. And so it was like, it's like, dude, if you're claiming all these big moves, exactly. like, oh, it's going to be easy so work. Weird. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to show do. you all stuff you've never even seen. Or do what you're going to say. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to leave him frozen on ice or whatever. Like, like Elsa. Elsa. Right, that was wack as hell. The oh, freaking wack is. Personally, that was, that was <laughs> whack. Like, you could have said, like, Todoroki. So he you could have said Iceman. Like, he said it twice. He said it twice. Like, twice. It was like, already cringy one time. Then bro. he hit it for the two time. And As an anime like, fan, you should have said Todoroki, bro. You should have said that dude from Bleach. <laughs> yeah. You should have no, said. Bro. You could have said, said Todoroki. Any, bro, if you oh, said Todoroki, bro. Oh my god, bro. People would be like, <laughs> like, like, bro. What's the What's the fool's name from that one anime? And it's like they all have, uh, Quirks. they have superpowers. I think, and, you're, I think you're talking about the like, one that we one has like half fire, half, half ice. Yeah, that's yeah, Todoroki, bro. Oh, that's Todoroki, bro. Got you. Oh my, if he if he said that. Literally yeah. would have took the took the internet by storm or something. I'm fire yeah. even if he had said I'm fire nice like Todoroki. Once he said the name, everyone would have gotten it's like you're gonna hyped. get dragged deep in the fire, but go out on ice like anything. Anything <laughs> would have been so better cool. than, than, than frozen like Elsa. Frozen like Elsa. Like you gotta let it go. Yeah. You gotta yeah, let it go, that, bro. Dude, yeah, that's awful. Wink. I can't wink. That's so. uh, but that's also one of the things I, I think it's a matter of like respect. Back at the same time, and like I know he might not give a shit because he's the champion. He hasn't been giving a shit over what people have been thinking. But it's like, dude, you're telling us you're gonna do this and that, this and that, this and that, and then none of it shows. Or like Kobe Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, like y'all yeah. said you were gonna fuck each other up. 
Y'all no, said that you guys had built, bad blood. They built that shit up like they were. And like, then it was shit. Like nothing. Like Colby Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, he just oh, Colby mauled him. Yeah, Masvidal he just pulled him down. Yeah, Masvidal but, didn't do shit. Yeah, Masvidal couldn't so do anything. In that in that case, bro. If you can finish your opponent, I say finish. Because the way we see a domination versus the way the fighters feel a domination, like, would you say it's like that type stuff? Because it's not that Jared wasn't like, it's not that he's like, what's the, what's the two words? Couldn't and wouldn't or whatever. But he he literally couldn't do anything. So in his mind, he knew that he couldn't like leaving the fight. He couldn't do it. Yeah. Even if he wanted to. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, are you trying to say like, like looking at the fight, like, like mentally defeated wise or like before you got even, even got yeah. the fight? Kind mentally of, defeated. Know, like, like he left mentally defeated. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I know what you're saying. So he's saying like from a perspective of like this. So like, even though to the common eye, it doesn't look like shit happened. Mm-hmm. For example, like a Jorge versus Colby, like Jorge left that fight. And he so was, mentally defeated. Yeah, because y'all was, don't understand. He had, he had, he had, had yes man yeah. in his locker room telling yes. him, "Oh, you won that fight." Because if you like, understand how it feels to just get out grappled like that, like he literally, like people don't understand, but he won the fight by showing, like, "Hey, I can literally hold this guy down and do whatever I want to him." Yeah, and that's he what he can't, did, and he can't do anything back to me. Or so um, like Aljamain Sterling him. and Peter Yan when yeah, he just yeah. held him like this the entire time. Yeah, like, like body boring as heck, but it's like. Yeah. Five, I don't need to see five rounds of you doing the same thing over and yeah. over and over again. I get it. You can do it. But yeah. Either but at the end of the day, or- yeah, yeah. The, he's got to do what he's got to do to win the fight. And people mm-hmm. don't understand this. Here's one thing people don't understand. I get your point. It's like, yeah, people don't want to see that. But if you really truly understand grappling, like how hard it is, how hard, how much it takes to get to that position. Yeah. Extremely difficult. So it's like, yeah, he gets to that position and he's like holding it. And people are like, oh, he's just holding it. But if oh, people only understood how hard that's why he 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 repped the reward of you know getting to that position because it's right. a very dominant position but it's very hard to get to that position just to be able to get someone's back and figure for their body like that dude for five rounds that is a yeah. lot of muscle endurance dude yeah i think that's it's like this i think it's because it was hyped up so we had our expectations super high up yeah he led yeah. us to those high expectations but it, it didn't show up so without, exactly so, so without that's that's it was like it's not that's that it was like a you. bad fight yeah it's just that it wasn't yeah. what you told us it was going to be. Yeah, so is without he, the is he included, needed to turn you, more. You, you could respect the fight, hmm? like without, like if you if you didn't watch any of like the build up of it. Yeah, would you respect it. it yeah, if it, if I had just like if they just showed the me the Izzy fight, fight. they didn't know yeah. any of the like backstory I to could, it. Yeah, I could respect Izzy's game plan because mm-hmm. I know he's securing financial security mm-hmm. and his legacy. But at the end of the day, what I can't respect is coming out and saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you're going to see something I've the never seen. That, and, oh, disregarding that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can respect what he did. But I just wish he wouldn't come out and say that stuff. But then again, like, you gotta sell the he, I think Izzy though. came out and even said, he's like, oh, yeah, but that's my game plan. You know, I made this guy think I was going to come out guns blazing. And then, so, bro, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure he reads a lot of Sun Tzu, bro, The Art of War. And, like, that whole book is, like, based off of deceiving your opponent <clears> and using the the most minimal your most minimal attacks in order to win type stuff bro so yeah like, yeah which is true because jared could have prepared for a totally different fight he could have thought izzy was talking all the smacks and oh i'm gonna show you stuff you've never seen come out so he's probably preparing for izzy just hunt him down and and then he meanwhile you know izzy's on the back foot and so he's like wow i wasn't planning fighting on my front foot you know nah izzy was way more on the on the aggressive side even though it was minimal yeah he yeah. was a lot more on the aggressive side it yeah. was max, I wouldn't say it was aggressive. I, I would just like say it was, like it was maintaining the flow. Yeah, Jerry yeah. was super conservative. Stiff. Yeah. Super conservative on the back foot. He was just know. scared of the distance. Mm-hmm. He was trying to figure out how to gauge his distance. He didn't know that at all. He couldn't figure it out. Yeah, he couldn't figure he couldn't it couldn't out. Figure out the puzzle. The yeah. best person, the best two people to 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 figure out distance with um Adesanya. Adesanya mm-hmm. is definitely Whitaker and um Kelvin. Yeah, those Kelvin are the two guy. exact people yeah. I was thinking too. Because Kelvin's always been the shorter fighter. Yeah. So he's used to always being the shorter fighter and, and fighting really tall people. Oh, you gotta watch that fight again, bro. Dude, and, my, yeah. uh, oh, my bad. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're good. No, brother. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes. English black tea. <laughs> Do you have English black tea? See? Si? Wait, wait. English. 
brother, you didn't prepare me my He asked like you thing. for one thing, brother. One thing, brother. He asked you for one, one thing. Bullshit, one thing. I'm going to go home. Go home, man. Go home, man. I love them, bro. I love them. This is number one bullshit. 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 This is number Yeah. Positive energy because you're being very negative right now. No, uh, no, no. Those guys they need a show ass. together. What'd y'all sure. think about uh, DC getting inducted in the Hall of Fame? Oh, Jeremy. congratulations oh. to the guy. Yeah, man. he's a freaking legend of sport. What, yeah. Oh, dude, when he freaking that announced minute. how he no, cheated he with the towel. The towel. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's one of like the oldest wrestling tricks in the book, bro. <laughs> literally, this fool came out and just it's like, it's like we all knew. We were like, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like you can see <laughs> the wrinkles from he your was just hand. Air, People were pulling it so hard on one side to make it firm. He just literally just. <laughs> taking off a couple pounds oh my gosh dude but that was so funny i i think it's hilarious how he finally came out and admitted it yeah he's like because it doesn't matter now you're yeah what? Well, i'm the hall of famer what's up it's, commentating but yeah freaking... that's awesome hey he got hey he's smooth bro he got away with it yep it's and then khabib is. also got that made into the hall of fame he got a yeah. nice speech yeah yep khabib had it had a good speech more reserved and it's you know? it's really cool seeing them like learn english in order to like What's the word? Communicate with each other, like yeah, they to, match to their each other's the fan, English. Like the the fan type stuff, like Khabib, like like he was saying, like he didn't really know know much, but he like knew how being in America, like he knew how much like English was necessary. Yeah, necessary to stuff. Yeah, he just needed to know a few and words. And now hearing his like hearing him speak, bro, it's like so. It's like smash, smash, not smash. It's smash, <sighs> smash, brother. Let's talk now. Bogus. I like bogus. Have you seen the interview when they ask him what he's gonna do after this fight? And he's like, "I'm Coca-Cola gonna go eat American burgers. burgers. Yeah, burgers, burgers, <laughs> burgers. Burgers. Is that like you're saying burgers? Burgers. <laughs> burgers. <laughs> now nah, those guys over there in Dagestan, bro, they different. Would uh, you train I saw, there? Huh? Would you train there? I would Give love the to train there. A lot of wrestlers from the United States have been there in tournaments, train there. Um, Aljamain Sterling just came out in an interview. I don't know if you saw it, but he was talking about. He's like, yeah. If, He's like, basically, if you know a guy's last name is like Nur, Nur, Nur Magomedov or, Magomedov or whatever it is, and he and he's from Dagestan or whatever like that, just know he's gonna be a freaking hard fight. Yeah, yeah. So his little cousin is doing good too. Yeah, it's, it's so true name. because all those guys are tough. Yeah, you can take all like those any of those guys and you just toss them in the UFC and they'll like make break the top ten easy because they're just he yeah. has like a it's like a clan, bro. bro. Just pure crazy strong ass Russians, dude, getting just, ready to dominate throughout the entire UFC. They're different, bro. And the thing like is they're so disciplined. Like for for example, for Khabib, like imagine how hard it would be to fight this. Why are you doing this, brother? guys? The, yeah, this guy's game plan. Really, listen, is to dominate you and grapple you to death, right, and smash you. Yeah. And no matter what you do, he's not going to break his great game plan. You could stuff one takedown, stuff two, stuff 10, stuff 20. He's going to shoot a 20 first. Like how do you, and he has unlimited cardio. Mm-mm, he how doesn't do get tired. Stop he that? doesn't get and, tired. And listen, at his level of wrestling, it's not going to take 20. It's going to only take two or three. But it's like, but it's like, how do you stop that if the whole time he's going to keep diving at your legs? Dude, the like f- your only shot is to catch him. But if you can't catch him, which is way hard to do statistically. Dustin right. almost like, got him. Yeah, Dustin he was, was the closest but, dude, one to ever get him. But dude, that, that gave me mad respect for Khabib's defense. <laughs> Hell Not yeah, bro, defense, the dude, his neck was literally like he felt he, he perfect defense, bro. Fell to the side, fell to the hip, loosened up the neck, got his head out. out. Perfect, bro. F- Took his back in. <clears throat> the funniest um said, Oh, you thought you could submit me? Here, bitch. let me no yeah. brother. This no, brother, number one bullshit. I, I you. Let's talk now. I strip you of consciousness, brother. The yes. funniest, um, like the funniest example. Of like what can you do against Habib, bro? If you see his fight with the uh, what's his name, Alex Trujillo, and then that was the one he he scored like the most takedowns. Take that in one fight or some shit. Literally on, I think it was like the 16th takedown, bro. He <laughs> suplexed him, and Alex literally has his hand in the air, like, like, like yeah, he's like, what what am I doing? Like, he's just getting wrestled. <laughs> it's not even fighting. He's just getting wrestled. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, like, is this allowed? He was just like, <laughs> like he's like, what do you like, think? What can you do, bro? What do you think of Islam? Do, you think, think he's got it to, got enough I to think, take on uh, Charles Oliveira? I don't know. I it's feel a like, close match. I feel it's like a good Islam's going to get submitted or something like that. I feel yeah. like Islam will get submitted. He's listen. Islam's got it, but he ain't got it like Khabib, bro. None of them got it like Khabib. No, Khabib Khabib's was like a whole once different animal. in a freaking his dad took time, you know, on or him whatever sure. hundred years, whatever right. you call that, you know. He's like one in a lifetime, bro. Like Khabib level, like awareness and stuff like that. 
like the next kind of fighter you'll see like Khabib will probably be me, you know. <laughs> so, so, uh, but yeah, besides that, bro, I, I don't know. I could just see Islam dominating and then getting caught in a submission. And then getting caught in a submission. I got yeah, to take down a sneaky submission. He doesn't even see, bro. A sneaky as shit. Who? He's gonna wrap his arm around and just fall back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was thinking of something in my head. Uh, I was thinking of, like, when Jorge Masvidal got, um, like, triangled while he was standing up. Remember that? I think so, yeah. But it, I was thinking it was Charles, but it wasn't Charles. It was, like, someone else. Nah, Charles is... He gets the yeah. freaking guillotine or he gets that rear naked choke. Now nah, Charles does whatever he wants when That's it comes true, to submissions. That, my, one of my favorite submissions that he does... That he did was the when... I don't even know what it's called, but... The leg is behind him. He makes him sit on his own leg while having his leg in between. So it's basically like a wrench just pulling his hamstrings the entire time. Yeah. I have one on yours. I'll show it to you guys or something. Is. Wait, is it, was it like a triangle or no? It's like a, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 it was his leg. Neck. He had his leg? Yeah. So basically the guy. What position was he it? Half guard or? Uh, Charles was on his back. And the guy basically sat onto him. But he was sitting on his own leg, and Charles Oliveira's leg was right in between. Oh. So as he sat and pulled him back, this whole thing is getting stretched out, making tap. Wow! Like submissions like that are, it takes a lot of time to get shit. Like dude, that. he also did a yeah. calf stretcher, dude. Like literally, like I forgot how he he had like a triangle behind like their leg or something, and then he literally just pulled them back, and their their leg was like going like that, bro. Greatest submission of all time. Okay, okay, that's literally what I just said. Greatest, greatest. <laughs> that's submission. literally what I was talking about. Are you serious? Yeah, it was that one. Yeah, he's made him sit back on his own leg, and he had his leg in between just so he can like crack it right here. Well, say the fucking right thing. It's a calf stretcher. No, I'm playing, bro. I literally said I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's so it's a I think calf stretcher. I don't know calf stretcher. But yeah, the way you explained it, I didn't understand it, but now I understand. Yeah, he that's, sat yeah. back on his own leg and just made everything stretch out. I think. Um, yeah, that was a good submission. I think probably like the greatest submission of all time though was um, Ben Asker and bulldogging, choking uh, Robbie Lawler. <laughs> 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 I can't believe they called that, dude. Hey, I think he went out, bro. He went out for a second. He don't even realize it. You think That's so, bro? Because yeah, you don't realize when you go out. You would you wouldn't even know if you were to get choked out for half a second. Just Half a second of your blood loss, and then and half then a second, second back. You, come back, you yeah. wouldn't even know. You just feel like you blinked. Robbie didn't know. I genuinely think. I genuinely believe Robbie. Robbie doesn't believe that he got uh, choked out. Yeah. But but sometimes you don't even realize it. Like if you've ever had that feeling of like closely going out, it's you don't even. It's kind of scary. It. Like it's like you like literally lose touch with yeah. reality, and when you come back, it's like you don't even know that you're out yeah. of it. Like stuff. in the heat of the moment, dude, it could have been so tight for a second that it just blocked it off real quick. And he just felt like he blinked, but that arm went limp, bro. There's no re- Robbie could try to explain that all he wants is, oh, I was just letting my arm loose. That dude, well, then you're retarded. You deserve <laughs> to get freaking the called off. Because yeah. who the heck decides to just let their body go limp when you're in a submission? That's what you don't do, or the ref's gonna think you're out, you know, right yeah. away. And you yeah. can't wait. You can't wait to say, oh, it was it for sure? You know, Remember some tr- people try to use that as like a deception move type stuff, and then like trying to like play possum almost, and yeah. then like. It resulted in them losing, who, and they were who, like, "No, that was part of the game plan." Who like, is that one fool? He calls himself like the Hulk or something like that, and he uh, he like painted himself all green one time. I know what's right. You're talking about. I don't know the like, name. He was fighting one of the Russian dudes or whatever. Yeah, like that. I remember that. And he pretended he name. was like all wobbly or whatever, and they called the fight. And I knew <laughs> that the guy was pretending he was wobbly. <laughs> he literally like <laughs> <laughs> he was not like yeah. yeah. yeah but so then funny. they're mad. I remember for a while they were like mad at like referees because like they're like. There's been too many early stoppages in the UFC type stuff. Like, there has, I would say there has. Yeah, here's and the then there's some of them where it's like, what the fuck? Who would you? Nah, bro, you were out. Yeah. You were saving your ass. Here's the thing about that. Like, here's the thing with that, like stoppages and stuff. Why it's so hard is because people don't understand how truly dangerous fighting is. Yeah, and, and how referees- much and how much can go wrong yeah. so fast. He's there to protect you. He's doing. Yeah, shot. people don't understand, bro. If you get, for example, if you get knocked out unconscious or you get like a flash knockout mm-hmm. and then like you're like going down or whatever and you're like there's like uh some people are like oh st- he should have stopped it or oh he could keep going but then you get nailed with another shot after your brain already shut down one time it's like that's when those cte that those are the cte yeah. shots right. you know and so people don't realize that like the ufc is trying to do what boxing can never do and what football can never do they're trying to 
you know, change the narrative of their guys having all these head drama and all these yep. issues and stuff like that. So they're very hyper aware right. of of calling the fights. And I think I think there's a joke. What is it? Quick stop Erdine or something like that. I don't know. Quick stop Erdine. Yeah. Some, but but it's just hard to call, bro. Because that that's the thing about fighting is is like in football and stuff like that. A, a lot of the plays are the same. It's like fighting. Fighting is never the same. Each individual fight is always different. Yeah. And so it's it's hard. And and each people, each person's different, you know, when it comes to, oh, how, how, how hurt much, is he? Yeah. How hurt is he? And how much can he operate? Yeah. At, on a conscious level, you know, is he, you know, so it's, it's hard to tell. So it's like for the refs, they kind of just got to, you know, play it by best feeling. But yeah, yeah sometimes you gotta look at your fire fighters. Sometimes, you know? sometimes you're like, okay, that was an early stoppage. And I agree. I'll be like, okay, that was, yeah, a, I'll be exactly. mad. I'll be like, it was an early stoppage. But at the end of the day, when I sit back, I'm like, okay, but yeah, but, if he wouldn't have called it and he would have gotten he like been just cold, like starched up, cold yeah. off the like a, a the second yeah, good thing the they did. second punch coming. You know, we're Monday, we're Monday morning quarterbacking. We're saying, oh, they stuff too early. But if oh, he would have got um Phil Haw versus um Joe Wynn. DC Haas, Spider. Haws. Are you talking yeah. about the fucking elbow? Versus Duron Wynn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. That. He was beating him up. Dude, that was a great stoppage. That was a great, great yeah. Stoppage. Maybe yeah. maybe a little bit earlier, just yeah. a little bit. Yeah, he could have stopped. He was it getting messed up. Yeah, exactly. Like that's, that's an example of like even it. though the guy's like not knocked out on the floor, like you need to stop the fight because he's just yeah. taking too much damage and yeah, he can't he's losing himself. Big time. And he's just like a walking zombie in front of it, just like going through the motions. Oh, but he can still get that lucky punch. Dude, no. You're dude. really gonna risk his life over one lucky punch? No, he's and losing a three round fight, dude. Like <sighs> yeah. they, they actually what? get um they're actually a little more loose with it on like more five round fights. Like, yeah, but they're still like yeah. safe about it. And it depends so. who you are too. Like if it's a championship fight, like if Izzy were to get rocked, they would give him, they would wait till he was KO to stop the fight. Like they're not going to, if Izzy was to get like dropped, they're not going to stop it. They're going to give the champ every benefit of the doubt before they right. stop that fight, you know, cause they know how important it is. Um, what do you think about the fucking, um, Pedro Munoz stoppage? Oh, he's a freaking paper champ. He's a baby. Too. He's a baby, bro. He's Algermain 2.0. That's what I call him. <laughs> freaking Pedro Munoz, you're a baby, bro. Come anywhere near me, I'll poke you in the eye, bro. Every single freaking eye, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a baby, bro. Like he didn't even get poked in the eye. He freaking I already got socked in the eye. His, nah, the it finger was, was on the outside like, of the eye. Yeah, he got socked in the eye. That's why his eye was swollen. After I watched him get whacked, I watched him get punched right in the eye, and he kept wiping his eye, closed fist. And then he got freaking and is bugging him. And then his finger barely went over his eye and he starts bitching and complaining. And it's like, no, dude, you just knew you was going to lose that fight. So you was yeah. looking for an easy way out. But that's so much of a that's happened so many times. And everyone like keeps blaming it on the gloves. Like what what do you think like would be like a good alternative for like the gloves? That, yeah. Like, how do you fix that? Because I need my fingers. Right. Here's the thing. You can't fix that because mm -hmm. the reason is like you can never fix it because you see those new gloves that they're trying to advocate for where they kind of come over the fingers and the mm -hmm. finger stuff. Well, that makes it a lot harder to grapple. So yeah. it'd be like, so you'd be disadvantaging grapplers and advantaging um, strikers. And I don't care how many freaking people say, oh, no, oh, it doesn't affect a grappling. Blah, blah, no, blah, blah. it does. No, you're a freaking soy boy. <laughs> Go drink your freaking soy milk and your oat milk. Okay, nobody hey, cares. Is pretty nobody fire. cares oat what you say, fire. bro. I still drink. I drink my hey, whole milk. You want to know why? Because I'm a whole ass man. That's why hey, I drink whole I milk. I still drink my cow titty milk, but like yeah. oat milk on the side is still pretty bomb. Yeah, no, bro. You oat milk on the side. You can't okay, sleep okay, on oat okay, milk. But not, Almond but, milk. Hey, we can agree that we ain't rocking with soy, right? Yeah, yeah soy milk. Fuck soy milk. Yeah, we can't. We can't be rocking with soy out here, bro. No way. Fuck soy. No, we we know estrogen boys, bro. Um, yeah, but uh, nah, yeah, he's Pedro Munoz is a little baby, bro. Like. Like Sugar was gonna win that fight, and the thing is, like about it too, is people were like, "Oh, why didn't he dominate the first round?" Is because well, Sugar knew that he was good enough to win two rounds. So he just wanted to feel him out the first round. He didn't win the first round, though. No, no, he didn't. Munoz yeah. won the first round. Yeah, yeah, and and but people were like, "Oh, well, Munoz won the first round. Why would he like try to opt out?" I was like, people don't realize this. Sugar just wanted to feel him out the first round because yeah. he he has distance. So he wants to feel his distance, his gauge. You were seeing the tides start to turn. He was turning it up. And Munoz recognized that. Munoz was in the fight, bro. That's why he, he wanted a way out. Because he's like, oh, shoot. He's going to start turning up on me. Right. And that's what happened, bro. When Dude, he when he did that up. little spin shit. And then uh, oh, Sugar yeah. did that. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was funny. That was funny. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What other fight? What other fight? Uh, So Strickland. Did you guys watch the early prelims? Dude, I watched the prelims. 
and the early prelims. Freaking! Did oh you, no, no, I didn't watch the early. The early prelims with the chick, right? Macy Barber, or whatever. Yeah, and was. freaking Jessica, how she got her arm dislocated, dude. No, I didn't see, but she the one face tats. Yeah, she was one. Oh, yeah, face she bad, yeah, I didn't she see the early shit. prelims. Hey, my my uh, child Jessica, was telling me, Jessica, Jessica Rose Clark, Rose Clark. Mm-hmm. They were telling me about that shit. It's like because I made this video about who are the finest women in, in the <laughs> UFC, and then they were like, they were like, they're like, how the hell did you forget? Jessica Rose Clark. So I checked her out and I was like, oh shit, she's actually pretty f- solid, bro. And then like, I seen that she had a fight coming up. I go to watch it. She gets, she's whooping ass. Okay. And then she gets her arm dislocated, bro. <laughs> what part of her arm got dislocated? Do you know? Like, uh, that, that She got caught in an arm bar? Yeah, she got caught in an arm uh, bar. And then. I didn't bro. see it. But the er, prelims, tough. Ian Gary. Yeah. Did you see that fight? Yeah, yeah. That was a nice one. Gary's a tough guy, bro. Throughout your wrestling career, <laughs> what do you think has been like your hardest match? Like the one you're like, fuck, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this one, but let's give it our all. Um I'm trying to think, bro. I've just had so many hard matches like that, you know, where you had to pull through last minute. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, you know, that my 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 sophomore year of high school, my first year, because I didn't wrestle my freshman year, I broke my ankle, so I was out. Um and How'd you break your ankle? Just rolled it in it? Yeah, I was wrestling, just freak accident. Calcium mm. deficient, bam, just snapped. Drink your milk, kids. Drink your fucking yeah, drink milk, your milk bro. Maybe the soy milk might have helped. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm busting your That was the problem, balls, bro. bro. I, wasn't, I wasn't drinking my cow titty milk, bro. Okay. That was the problem. But anyway. Got to uh-huh. the D, bro. <laughs> like I was saying. Um, <laughs> like I was saying, you know. <laughs> um, Wait, what was I saying? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, no. So yeah, my sophomore year of high school, I was, uh, wrestling for the CIF championship and it was like my first like big match in the spotlight. Like, mm-hmm. and I went out there and it was like first period was like zero, zero. And then like second period, like I chose bottom dude puts me in a cradle, puts me to my back. And I remember, like, in my head, it was, like, slow motion, dude. I felt like I was on my back for the longest amount of time, but I really was. Like, I wasn't. Was like I was there for seconds. a decent amount of time, but he got full back points, whatever it was, three near fall or whatever. I forget how it works in high school because college are different. But, um, but yeah, so he had me on my back, and I just remember thinking, I was like, dude, in my head, it was slow motion. I was like, I have to freaking kick out of this because when a guy has you in a cradle, he has you locked up, and he has his arm under here and around your neck. Got and I was like, dude, I got to freaking kick January out of this 4th. as hard as I can. So I freaking go, wham break his lock get to my belly i'm down so that's like two point takedown or whatever and then he's got his near fall so i'm or i'm down like 5-0 or whatever which I mean, when you're wrestling someone that's a close match that's a lot of points that's a lot of points yeah, to, to, to make up, for. up. and Jeez. so i i get out and i'm like all right we've got a minute left the second so i just start freaking boom put it on him freaking get a takedown i'm like i gotta just start turning it on then freaking let him go, get another takedown. And then the third period, he choose bottom, he's still up by a couple points, get another takedown. Mm-hmm. There's like 30 seconds left of the match, bro. This is for the CIF championship. And I just freaking shoot another one, get another takedown. And uh, yeah, like with like barely, like with like 10 seconds left. And then I just r- rode him out and it was crazy, bro. Like everyone was going nuts. It was like freaking comeback of the tournament. Comeback of the century? Yeah, comeback of the century, bro. But uh, but no, nah, that I've had a lot of matches like that, you know, where you just have to freaking dig deep, nut up, and and get in there, and you're like, okay, this is gonna suck, but now it's time to get gritty, you know. What's one of the craziest memories you got from like your wrestling days in high school, or uh, even in college? Coming like like from like a match wise, or just like in anything general? in general, just while you were in the sport <laughs> of wrestling. Oh, dude, I got some crazy stories, bro. But uh, <laughs> well, first off. One of my favorite memories is my sophomore year of high school. <laughs> uh-huh. All of a sudden, my coach is like, yeah, we got a bunch of these football guys that are going to come to the wrestling room. So I'm like, cool. Sounds good. All of a sudden, these freaking knuckleheads show up. Christian <laughs> said a case. Uh, Kiki. Uh, who else was it? Bro, Seth. So, um, uh, Nick. Nick, Nick Cameron, 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 So we get the squad of like three or four homies. Uh, Davin K. Like, Davin K. K dude, we had like five dudes pull up. Okay. And and usually how it works is the football players come out and they'll they'll do one practice, they'll be done. Like, yeah, I'm not sticking around. But I don't know how this worked out, bro. All these fools decided to stay. <laughs> David, <laughs> Seth, Christian. And I think it's because we were just having such a good time too. And uh dude. it was just dude, it was just so funny because we just used to mess around so much, bro. Like 
We literally freaking, we had this one kid from Greece or whatever. He's like exchange student. Now Kiki used to just <laughs> troll him, bro. He would just like, like talk like him. And, and the kid would always try to fight him. He'd be like chasing after Kiki in a full sprint, bro. Trying to literally fight Kiki. And he would okay, just okay. be, okay, okay. And he would just be trolling him, bro. So just like fun stuff like that, bro. Like fun memories. Like my funnest, like the funnest memories about wrestling is just like all the stuff that came along with it. You know, like traveling and. And just being around your friends, dude. And just being with the bros, having a good time. Damn. You know, getting into a little trouble with each other, you know. And, uh, but yeah, we used to have some good times, bro. We go to uh, tournaments. That was the, those were some of the funnest times when I go to the big tournaments and we'd all have like our hotel rooms and we'd just all be stay after the tournament would be over. And we have one more night. We have to stay there. And we'd all stay up super late, running around to each other's rooms, <laughs> ordering pizza late at night. Freaking Getting as much caffeine as you fucking oh, can. Oh, dude, just literally <laughs> turning up, bro. Just turning up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are some of the best times, dude. So um, definitely, definitely wrestling has given me a lot of great memories. And I'll definitely always cherish that. And it ain't over yet. I still got another season. But once it's all said and done, I'm ready to hang the shoes up, you know, and start my fighting career. A lot of people have, a hard time letting go mm -hmm. whereas i'm more i'm like okay You're i'm content go, i'm content with it you know this has been something that's given me a lot of opportunities in life taught me a lot of life lessons you know when it comes to You're discipline. Ready to bring it to the next level yeah when it comes to discipline everything but i'm mm -hmm. like i feel like anyways like skill wise i'm more bent towards success you know i've already i've already had great amount of success in wrestling but i'm even bent towards more great greater amounts of success in fighting just because of my natural athleticism and, and my god gifted talents and so, so I'm really excited for my fighting career mm -hmm. because I'm just, I'm ready to take over, dude. I'm ready yeah, to take bro, over. It's going to be fucking honest. cool to watch you. Yeah, dude. So it's going to be a good time and y'all, y'all going to be there. You already know. Who knows? Maybe um, I'll be commentating your fight. Yeah. Well, by that time you already be, your podcast will already be above Joe Rogan's. It'll be the number one podcast. Oh world. yeah. Oh yeah. It, well, it already yeah. is. We're, it already yeah. is. Like, nah, cause bro, remember, we if we're going by Logan we Paul's logic, remember, if he, I don't remember, do you guys too. see that? You can see that clip where he was like, well, yeah, number we one think podcast our podcast the is the best. So yeah, number one podcast in the whole world. Wait, what's it again? Well, no. So he was saying that they self-proclaimed that the, they basically self-proclaimed themselves as the number one podcast in the world, but it was this lie is Joe Rogan's number one in the world. Yeah. So I said, if we're going by Logan Paul's logic. Welcome yeah. back to the number one podcast in the world. I'm going to start it off with that. Dude, Every single time now. You have to, you you have have to start to, it off like that. That's the best way to do it. But um, Give me one second. I got to Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I, mean, I was lost I was like, "What the fuck? Where's the water go?" Yeah, my bad. But, well, um, I think I'm gonna end it here. We've been talking for an hour and 34 minutes. Bro, exactly. Dude, before we get off, bro, is there anything? Yeah, bro. You anything wanna, you want to say? You want to? Yeah, yeah. Any just, last stories? Anything yeah. else? Um, you know, just. You know, it's not like it's not like we're kicking you out of the podcast. We no, can literally no, keep no, going no, as no. much as you want. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just say, first first and foremost, thank you for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. You know, giving me a platform, a voice, you know, to uh get myself out there. And um, and yeah, I would just, you know, for the viewers, especially young kids, if you're watching this, you know, coming from a D1 athlete, you know, it it, it takes a lot. It, it does, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, to get to the top, it takes a lot, but just Keep your head down, keep grinding, keep working, stay disciplined. You could conquer anything through discipline. You know, that's what I tell people. I'm like, people, we live in a, we live in a, uh, you know, I want it right now and give me society and, oh, you know, like, oh, you can't focus, here's pills. Oh, you're depressed, here's pills. Oh, this blah, 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 here's pills. And it's just like, nah, bro, it's like, it's like, there's gonna be hard, to, everyone's gonna have hard times in life, you know, everyone's gonna have trials and tribulations. But you could conquer any adversities, any mental adversities, anything through discipline, routine and discipline. And I'm not going to lie, like not just because like we're MMA fans or you're an MMA fighter, this and that, this and that. I think that knowing a martial art and training a martial art will help you a lot with your discipline. Dude, yeah, 100%. Not going to lie, bro. Dude, 100%. Yeah, and, not, and, and that's another thing I want to end on, you know. Every young man should know how to defend himself, bro. Oh, hell like, yeah. Like we dude. live in a society where people are too too comfortable these days running their mouth because they don't realize how vulnerable they are. You know, like people will run their mouth. And because bro, we live in a again, society, we live again. in a society where our society, because of the bureaucracy of the United States and the way our judicial system set up, we've empowered weak men to be weak men. Oh, you could talk shit to the one dude. And if he hits you, oh, he's going to go to jail because he hits you. It's ridiculous. It's retarded, bro. bro it's say like, it louder. It's bro. retarded, no. you know? It's and like, it's like, it's like if some dude's talking shit, I should be able to go there and sleep him on site and it's yep. end of story, you know? 
then that's how it should be. Literally, it's been coming up over and over again on my TikTok. And it's like the conversation between, um, I forgot his full name, Dr. Jordan. Peterson. Dr. Jordan yeah, Peterson yeah. and Joe Rogan. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you got to be a garden and a warrior than a garden in a war or something yeah yeah, like yeah it's better to be a warrior, warrior in a garden than a, a gardener garden in a, in a war, war right? exactly. and it's very true bro because we live in this yeah. society, this society today and it's all gardeners bro it's all gardeners and they hate guys like us they hate guys like us and they look at us as the bad guys and why is because it it's it's because you're weak it's yeah it's, <laughs> it's primarily coded in their instinct you know yeah guys like us back in the day you know if you were to go back to like you know the primal times and way back in the roman times and stuff like that you know we're we're the alphas. We're we're the guys that aren't going to take shit from nobody, and and instinctually they don't like that. We live in a society where they're trying to you know say oh toxic masculinity and oh we're trying to you know it's okay you know to let your emotions out and blah 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 and all this blah, blah. it's garbage, bro. It's all freaking garbage, dude. And uh, that's they're literally trying to de de uh, masculinize yeah. society. And so, so that's, dude, that's the fall of Western civilization, bro. You heard it here first as they're trying to de demasculinize, um, Western society and, and, uh, but yeah. Bro, I would definitely rebuttal the whole toxic masculinity thing, but we're already at like the end of the thing. Yeah. Type stuff. You can keep yeah. going, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah. Now, you already said, you already said we're about to. Final thoughts. Your final thoughts aren't thoughts. over. Let right. me hear your thoughts. Yeah. This Don't be afraid to speak, man. I'm not afraid to speak. I'm, I'm afraid to go overboard. Then speak your mind. Since you, since speak you your said, mind. I go overboard, bro. Go for it. You're not going overboard. All right. Keep I genuinely don't like. There's a there. There's there's times where people reach about the whole toxic masculinity thing, bro. But like, I don't know the whole the whole alpha and all that stuff is it's kind of. No, I think that's that's going back to like um you know when you're doing something wrong. You're you're speaking out of your ass now. Right. You know, there's yeah. the difference between speaking out of your ass and being a true disciplined man. Like there's yeah. the, like the whole like red pill society, red pill, blue pill society. I can't get behind those fucking mm -mm. dudes, bro. Because they're fit dudes, like fanatics. I can't get behind those kind of dudes. Yeah. They're freaking yeah. crazy about it. Like yeah. I don't know. There's, there's and they'll defend it they, with they their hide soul. a lot of that 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 insecurity, bro. Like they uh -huh. don't per project those feelings like it shows like the more that you hide it the more it shows you know what i'm saying sort of <laughs> kind of you, you will learn in time brother yeah you will learn yeah in time. but no yeah anyway so i do agree with you on that though that everyone should be able to take care of themselves defend themselves right. and that yeah. men shouldn't be as afraid or as uh self-conscious as like they are now because like yeah. even i've so i've lost a loss of my sense of confidence but i think even when i get back in the rhythm of like doing jujitsu like i yeah. i went to go train in a jujitsu gym literally like we i went with him and then the day before i went to another place by myself yeah and once i got to the start of like rolling and i like yeah. i felt my body go back to like how it was before like being able to roll yeah, and you dude. get that sense of confidence you feel yeah. good about yourself and that's what bro. it's about bro it's it's literally freaking it, it, it's tribal bro it's ancestral it's like getting around a group of guys dude being around a group of guys freaking doing hand-to-hand -hand combat being around the testosterone, bro. Since the dawn of time, that's how, you know, they went to war, bro. They had chance and everything. You get around that vibes, that energy, and it freaking gets you hyped up. And that's what men need. And, and, and matter of fact, the world would be less violent and there would be less, you know, um, you know, people hurting people and violence and crime and stuff like that if people not only knew how to defend themselves uh, against that stuff, but if people were trained, they would have more respect. That's because true. people that think so people think and people think guys like me are the yeah. dangerous ones. I'm not the dangerous ones. Guys like us that know what we're doing and we're well trained and stuff, we're not the dangerous ones. I am a very disciplined individual. I have respect for everybody because I know, you know, people don't know what I know and I don't know what other people know. But I'm, but that's just what combat sports teach you, right? It's the dudes that aren't trained, aren't disciplined, have never had their ass whooped before. I'm a strong believer in that every young man should have his ass whooped at least once in his life. And I've had my ass whooped um, over and over every day in the wrestling room, freaking face shoved down Dustin in the Poirier's mats. coach. Do you know yeah. who is, who is uh, Dustin Poirier's coach? I forgot his I name. I don't know. I don't um, know. Um, Fog, I, like, once I say the name and look it up, you're going to know exactly who he is. But he said that suffering know. and defeat and losing yeah. is one of the best things to develop, like, the mental for a guy. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. You always got to take... Take your L's as lessons, every, bro. Yeah, every exactly, man, yeah. every man needs to be humbled at least once in his life in combat, and he needs to be embarrassed. All right, but what's your what's your what's your um, what's your what's your stance on 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 humble? Like, what's your 
opinion on humble. Here's my thing. Because I feel like people are using the, the humble word and just like, I don't know. But go ahead. Here's go my ahead. thing. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between humility uh -huh. and confidence. And I know that sounds cliche, but but the, there's a real thing. There's a difference. You know, ever since I was a kid, I would speak things into existence. I would say, yeah, I'm going to dominate. Yeah, I'm going to be, you know, CIF. I'm going to be state champ. I'm going to be a D1 wrestler. Manifestation. I'm, I'm the best. And everyone, and I would say, yeah, I'm the best. I'm going to do it. And everyone would say, bro, you need to be more humble. You're too cocky. See? How is that being cocky? Like, no. Look at me now. It's not, it's Look not at me you now. being cocky. It's yeah. them being insecure. It's, it's exactly. them being insecure yeah. and because they don't have do enough that. confidence. It's not yep. about being humble. They don't have enough confidence to speak it up and manifest it because they're that worried the and they don't want to be embarrassed when they don't mm -hmm. accomplish their goals because they know they're lazy or whatever it is, whatever the deal is, and they're not going to accomplish their goals. Don't tell me, you know, right. to, oh, I go to home. You go to home with yourself. No, yourself. dude, I'm just speaking what I destined in my mind since I was a kid, my dreams, my goals. And guess what? It happens. So it was like now looking back, I'd like to have the same conversation with those people and say, was like, I I'm cocky? Not saying, I'm not or, saying yeah. I'm better than you to be cocky. I'm saying yeah. it because I am genuinely yeah. better than you. And I'm sorry, yeah. but. And I put in the work. Exactly. And, and, like I, and I put, put in the in. time. You to, haven't put in. Yeah, exactly. I put yeah. in the work. I put in the time because this is where I want to go in life. And that's where I'm going to get. Yeah. And, and if you want to call that, us. if you want to call that cocky, then you could call that cocky. I call but it I, jealous. Yeah. But I call it confident and I call it assure. You know, I have assurance in, in knowing what I do. And if I put in the time and the discipline to do something and I'm hungry about something, I should be able to free, freely, willingly, yeah. you know, speak my mind freely. about, about my, you know, my goals and my future, you know, without right. people saying, Oh, you need to be more humble. It's like, screw that, bro. I am humble. You know, I'm humble when it needs to be. I know when to hold my tongue, you know, mm -hmm. I know when I, when I'm around people, you know, and it, and it's not time to be confident or whatever. I mean, I'm always confident, but I'm saying like, you know what I'm saying? If I was the in a room with Mike, if mentality. I was in a room with Mike Tyson, yeah. I'm not going to start trying to give Mike Tyson advice on how to fight. <laughs> no, <laughs> because yeah, because then Mike I would Tyson. be being a freaking ignorant, cocky young kid. Yeah, right. you know, I know when to hold my tongue. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, but if but if I was in a room with Mike Tyson and we was talking wrestling, I would feel 100 percent confident. Tell Mike, you don't understand when it comes to this grappling aspect. Blah 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 blah. And that's not being cocky. That's not not respecting your elders. It's just that that's you just, have that knowledge. Yeah. Over hey, you. and him being when, knowing that he's a novice in the grappling, he'll listen. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's not, and it's not like a. Oh, like it's not a scolding thing or nothing. It's just I heard this one quote. It says, um, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Yeah. You know, more listening, less talking. Yeah. That's yeah. what a lot of people are forgetting how to do. Yeah. Basic no, communication, listening and speaking. It's very true. But at the same time, too, it's like, you know, it's like you said, that's the key, you know, listening. And and you learn from that. But um, but yeah, it's just we live in a we live in a world, bro, where we have the majority of people here. Here's the thing. We live in a world. You always hear this. People say, oh, there's lions and there's sheep, right? They're wrong. There's lions, there's sheeps, and there's hyenas. Uh -huh. <laughs> the hyenas are just not as powerful as the lions, but they are dangerous. You know, they're not vulnerable. So they're like they're the sheep, still a threat, but they're the opposite of the sheep. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the opposite of the lion. They're, they're, they're the one with bad intent. They're, star, they're the one, the star. hyenas are the ones that want to bring down the lions. You know what I'm saying? It's not the sheep that want to bring the, the, the lions. The sheep don't give a shit. The lions the are supposed to eat, be prideful. sleep, and shit. That's right. what the sheep do. <laughs> the, the hyenas want to convince the sheep and convince all the other hyenas to bring down the lion. And that's the world we're living in, bro. So it's like, that's the reality. And you got to know that, bro. And you got to know that, you know, there's, there's more hyenas. There's way more sheep. And there's more hyenas than there is lions in this world. So knowing that, you know, you got to know who you're talking to, what's you going on. Yeah. How exactly. are you going to lead someone else if you can't lead yourself? Exactly. Because people, it's the reality of life. You know, what's funny is people, like I said, it sounds cliche, but people yeah. want to see you fail, bro. Like people, jealousy is human nature and people want to see you fail a lot. No. And it's like everyone thing may, everyone may think that it's like a cliche thing, but even so, yeah. Oh, listen, that you're just saying, no, it's yeah. the truth. And that's why you're like this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> That's exactly. why you're all down because it's the truth. You're just not accepting it. Yeah. Yeah. Be confident in yourself. Yeah. So that's my, that's, that's my note. 
kids train combat sports, whether it's jujitsu, boxing, wrestling, get involved in some sort of combat sport. Learn how you're to respect yourself. You're not going to get hurt. Well, yeah, maybe. you're going to get yeah. hurt. You might it's, get hurt. You know, time maybe like once or twice. But listen, listen. In the long run, you'll be building. You gain your brain. respect for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, confidence. Gain respect for yourself. Respect for others. And you'll have that confidence walking around with your head hell high, knowing that and you can defend yourself. And confidence goes so far. Yep. In every aspect. You got a job to do? Yep. Dude, I got this shit. Exactly. Job interview? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. That's what I tell people. It's like, people are like, oh, you know, how, like, how are you, you know, like, or they're like, oh, how, how could you do this? Or it's so hard or this task or whatever. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. guys, I wake up dur- during the school year from August to freaking, you know, March. Mm-hmm. I wake up every morning at 6.30 a.m. to fight guys at 8 a.m. every morning, Monday through Saturday. How can anything else be harder than that? You know, in the hardest combat sport there is. I wake like, up and kick people's yeah, asses. Yeah, like I wake up every day <laughs> and have to fight another man. Every day in my life, Monday through Saturday, rest Sunday. It's like, it's like, if I'm doing that, it's like everything else in life is easy, you know? Yeah, what but, you're doing is nothing compared yeah. to what I'm doing. And you don't even have to do it to the level I do it, to that that respect. But when you yeah. think about it like that, you're like, bro, what I do, you know, training combat sports is so hard that it just, like you said, it gives you that confidence and you're like, okay. It's just a discipline part yeah, of it that's yeah. really, really hard. Yeah, exactly. That discipline, mm-hmm. you, you get forced into that routine and with that routine, you have to have discipline. And that discipline is what gives you the confidence. Because you're yeah. like, okay, I know I could accomplish anything now through my first point, through discipline. Anything that you can be can't half ass it. Like yeah. that's something you just no, can't you half ass. You can't half ass anything right. in life, bro. If you half ass one thing, you're going to half ass everything in life. That's the reality. That's why they you say know? like, it's as simple as making your bed in the morning. Yeah. How are you going to start your day off with an unmade bed? Yeah, exactly. You can't even do that. How are you going to do yeah. the rest of the things in your day? Yeah. It's like, don't plan on being a wrestling state champion if you're failing your classes. Like, just yeah. don't. Because that tells me everything I need to know about you. you you're doing the bare minimum yeah. by getting good grades. Exactly. You just can't do that. Yeah. No. You, you may be way more athletic than a kid or something like that, but there's one kid that's not half ass and shit, and he's putting in that work, right. and mm-hmm. he's putting in that one thing to where he's going to beat you at that buzzer beater, and you're going to have to live with that the rest of your life because you're half ass and stuff. Mm-hmm. And That's true. That's the reality. But yeah, that's my end note. That's my end piece. So. That's true. That was, yep. that was quite the uh, the end End statement. I, I think sir, it was a good end a statement. Believe And John sense. Jones, get your shit together. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> and there you have it. Yes, Sexy sir. BJ Ray. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys happen to enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to turn your post notification bell by your Kickback Podcast merch. Sir. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yes, sir. We should have you again soon. Whenever oh, you want to come kick it, bro, you definitely can. Kickback go. Podcast. Yes, but yeah, train some sports. There are lots of fun. Gain your confidence, believe in yourself. Don't stop that. Believe in yourself.